7 millibars. That's what we have as of 9 o'clock. Uh, any moment now, this graphic is going to update and we're going to get the latest data in. Uh, so we'll give you that and we'll come back to this graphic once again. But that's going to be coming in shortly and it's going to be making landfall shortly. And again, soon we're just going to dispense with uh, the uh, track because uh, we know where the hurricane is. There's no uh, mystery on where it's going to go. Uh, this is the latest uh, high resolution rapid refresh model just came in while we were switching over power and and again, we see the storm coming in. Here we are at 11 o'clock and those tropical rain bands gradually working their way, especially into uh, Vermilion and into uh, Cameron and obviously uh, into Calcasieu Parish. And let's see where this uh, storm is on the map very close to the landfall. And again, as we get to 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, we're going to see these tropical rain bands uh, pushing through much of uh, Acadiana. So we're going to see those gusts uh, continually on and off as we head into the uh, nighttime hours as those tropical rain bands continue to work their way from the south to the north across the region. Again, we're going to have the core of the storm. This is where the highest winds are going to be, the damaging winds right here. And then outer rain bands, this is where the winds will gust to 70 or 75 as we work our way deeper into the evening hours. And again, that storm pretty much riding up across southwest Louisiana. This track may be a little bit on the left side of our envelope. We're going to see what the Hurricane Center comes in on their latest forecast track and then match the model. But this is the different model than uh, the graph model that we were showing you earlier. And here we are through 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm thinking that this might be the latest bulletin coming in. So I'll go ahead and check that right off the printer right now uh, just to see. And no, these are the tornado warnings that we have going uh, at this time. So uh, we'll kind of revisit the latest uh, track information on the storm, the latest particulars on the storm coming up in just a bit. But here we are. Ah, I heard the doorbell ring. I know that is the latest right there uh, because I have it set for a doorbell setting. So let me get back and uh, here we go. And uh, as the printer prints the latest data, hot off the press. Okay, still wet, uh, 150 mile per hour winds uh, moving to the uh, north northwest at 15, so no major changes there. Pressure at 939 millibars, so now we are at the point where uh, the storm is leveling off, thank goodness. So we're going to probably be below a Cat 5 here. Uh, and let me just read the discussion as it comes in from the National Hurricane Center. Maximum winds 150 with higher gusts. No significant change in strength is likely before landfall. Rapid weakening is expected after Laura moves inland. Hurricane force winds extend outward 60 miles from the center of uh, the storm and tropical storm force winds up to 205 miles away from the center. Uh, latest sustained wind 43 and a gust of 49 were reported by uh, Texas Point, Texas at Sabine Pass and a gust of 58 was recently reported at Cameron. So now we're starting to see those mid-range uh, uh, gusts in the Cameron area at uh, in the uh, tropical storm, mid-range tropical storm range going on in Cameron Parish. So um, just trying to cull over any changes. There are no additional changes to storm surge forecasts. Uh, so I want to make sure I have that straight, straight and no changes to the hurricane watches and warnings uh, going. And 110 mile an hour winds, and boy, they have this weakening pretty fast to a low pressure system. Uh, but uh, we don't think this is going to be a low. I think this is just a bad plot right here, uh, but uh, more than likely this is still going to be a category uh, two storm as it moves northward. And that's what we've been showing you on this model right here. So we'll pick it back up with a high resolution rapid refresh model. So after midnight tonight, that's when the uh, tropical showers and storms will get going across all of Acadiana. Here we are post midnight. This is when we're going to be rocking and rolling and working the Doppler radar on uh, the particular cells that will be pushing across the area. And then the core of this storm pounding southwest will Louisiana. Southerly winds again pushing that storm surge up and I'll be checking those storm tides coming up in just a bit once we have a little bit more news information for you but want to give you a full weather briefing. Here we are at seven o'clock in the morning and again uh, still some very intense squall showing up across portions of Evangeline and also uh, uh, Acadia Parish and again those other outside tropical squalls which by the way once the sun comes back up tomorrow these could be tornado producers as well so we're not going to be out of the woods.
woods for a severe weather threat until that begins to diminish and we get the storm moving farther away. Uh, but the bottom line, we see on and off showers and storms continuing into tomorrow evening, but then quieting down as we get to this time tomorrow night. No changes with the storm surge. That storm surge is going to be catastrophic, uh, unsurvivable as deemed by the National Hurricane Center. That was in their wording earlier today, 15 to 20 feet here. And this is going to update in a little bit as well. After that 10 o'clock bulletin comes in, other products such as a storm surge, such as uh, some of the other wind guidance does change as well. High water and wave envelopes will be higher than the nine foot inundation. So uh, anything in red here, and we can't stress this enough, is going to be underwater by nine feet by tomorrow sometime during the day. It'll take a while for all this water to work its way inland, but that's going to happen for sure overnight tonight. Uh, so uh, Holly Beach, Cameron, Creole, Grand Chenier will all be part of the Gulf of Mexico going into tomorrow, and there's going to be 10 feet of water there, 9 or 10 feet, if not more, uh, as we get down through Cameron. Eventually, that water gets beaten down by the marsh, and the waves get beaten down by the marsh, but the water uh, penetrating in areas that were very similar to Hurricane Rita, and again, water at least 3 feet above the ground in the coastal areas along and south of Highways 14, which is Abbeville here to Gaydon including Kaplan, and then over toward uh, just the south of New Iberia as we get toward the Lydia area uh, and down through Sycamore Point. And again, uh, there's uh, Highway 14. So I would expect, and, and the model doesn't show this, but if you had high water in Rita, you're going to have very similar conditions or possibly worse since this is a very potent storm and a potent storm at landfall. you got to remember uh, when uh, both Rita and Ike made landfall, they were bigger storms. They were four. Ike was a four. Rita was a five the day before, but as it came inland, it was a three. Uh, but the storm surge was already a done deal, and we'll see very similar results with this system as well. So here's the uh, graph uh, model uh, showing us these wind gusts as we go through uh, the next several hours. And again, those wind gusts are going to be on the way up as we get closer to midnight. And this area in white is going to be the area that's going to see 100 mile an hour wind gusts. This is gusts, not sustained winds. What does the damage well the sustained winds do some damage but those peak gusts that's what does the damage and some of those peak gusts will be well into the 100 mile per hour range and we'll take a look at the uh, latest uh, uh, high resolution rapid refresh model because that's a new this one is still uh, from a little bit earlier but this model will be updating shortly and that's going to be uh, right around between now and about 11 o'clock tonight uh, from what I understand but uh, again those strong wind gusts continuing tomorrow morning but finally a Baiting as we go into tomorrow afternoon, uh, especially after, uh, say, mid-afternoon. And then once the sun goes down, the winds really die down nicely. So that is the good news. As for rainfall, uh, see no reason to deviate from this. Uh, we're going to see some locally very heavy rains. Not everybody's going to see 5 to 10 inches of rain, but uh, 3 to 5 is an excellent bet for everyone. 5 to 7 for a lot. And then you get into the 10 inch rain for a few isolated for the very few is going to be up to 15. And here's the latest high resolution rapid refresh model. And this would be the good news if you're Brobridge on eastward, a lot less rainfall. But again, these numbers could certainly go higher. And then back to the west, the model, uh, this model has been on the lower end versus the graph. So maybe this is the lower end of what we could expect. But you see some of these yellow areas showing uh, very heavy rainfall. And coming out in the next weathercast, we're going to pull out the RPM model as well. Never can I have enough information and gives us a great idea on what to expect. But overall, unsurvivable, catastrophic storm surge. We know that's going to be coming in and that's going to be uh, more than likely worse than Rita. And then as we go into the rainfall category, we're talking 5 to 10 inches of rain, isolated 15. And these are all National Hurricane Center information, so I'm not going to deviate from this. I see no reason to deviate from this. Uh, for me, this is for me, expect 40 to 60 mile an hour winds. Sustained winds at times, not all the time. Peak gusts 75 to 90 uh, in squalls 
especially as we get Lafayette on westward and maybe as high as maybe 130 mile an hour gusts well west of Lafayette, but we're talking mainly Jeff Davis uh, into Cameron, into Calcasieu Parish, and quite possibly Beauregard Parish uh, as we uh, see those winds. And that means also isolated tornadoes. We have those going right now, and widespread power outages are going to begin, and we see that as this storm gradually works its way in. We'll be watching this rain band right here. I don't like to see lightning with these kind of rain bands because uh, this is uh, what generally uh, produces the very heavy rain fall rates of three to four inches per hour. So the bottom line when you hear if you're involved as you go deeper into the night and you may try to go to sleep two or three o'clock in the morning and you have a tropical squall coming through. If you hear thunder, it's going to be raining at a rate that will flood your street inside of an hour. So keep that in mind three or four. It's not so much about the amount. It's about the intensity, how quickly that three or four inches can fall and very easily that can happen in a 45 minute to hour time frame when we are dealing with these uh, tropical systems as such. So here's the bigger picture. Again, you can see the eye wall still just south of the Cameron coastline. This red line here is that tornado watch. I'm going to probably take that down so it doesn't confuse us. And we have those tornado warnings going now over the open marshes. And Bradley, do you have any velocity products up right now yet? The velocity a little bit slowed down. Okay. Uh, but yeah, zooming in, I don't know if we can get to max two here. Um, real quick uh, out on the screen, but uh, it looks like the heaviest band, like you mentioned, moving into the Sycamore Point area at this time. Um, and again, this is a band we're going to watch as it generally moves toward the north and west here over the next couple of hours. Uh, yeah, Rob's pointing out there. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, the Forkett Island area, you're getting in on a pretty uh, heavy tropical shower moving through your area, Lake Arthur as well, Grand Chenier. Um, eye wall just offshore where we're going to see the heaviest of the storms and the worst of the wind. So Rob, uh, I know you're going to be pointed out here with the uh, product. I'll try to get the velocity up and working. It okay. was a little bit slow there uh, when I was trying to get to it. I'll try again. That's here. all good. That's uh, you know we it's always a fluid situation when we're doing these severe weather coverages. I could do some hand tracking from here. And again, that was the cell that uh, it looked a lot stronger a little while ago. And this is this is the nature of the storms and these uh, tornadoes that are pushing on through. Uh, they last for a very little period of time. Now this is velocity data, and you're going to see more of this as we go deeper into the night. Now uh, we have two distinct color patterns, right? You have all, uh, the red and the oranges and the magentas here uh, showing up on the left side. On the right side, you see the blues. Uh, that means that uh, what uh, this is the essential uh, part of Doppler radar. The blue tells us that the raindrops are moving toward the radar and the red means it's moving away from the radar. I always thought it used to it should be the other way around, uh, but that's just me and that's just me being a weather nerd about it if I had my druthers, but I can go ahead and should be able to query some of this and it didn't work early. Yeah, 100 mile an hour winds. Now, uh, wherever I'm pointing is going to show up right here, uh, but notice we get into this white right here and 141 mile an hour winds. That's what we're picking up at cloud level, okay? So this is not working, it's not down at the ground, but this is why we're talking about a 150 mile an hour storm so we can pick up on some of those things. And then uh, we'll go over to where we see this uh, enhanced blue, where we think we have a tornado. And there's 100 mile an hour winds there. So uh, there certainly could be a spin up, uh, but again, uh, fortunately, this is in the coastal marsh area. So this is in the middle of nowhere right now. Uh, and if I zoom in, uh, we're uh, over toward Grand Lake. And this is, uh, this is where you see uh, there's a possible tornado going on right here right now because uh, we have that blue that we showed you 100. Uh, and then we'll go over here and we'll point out 39. So minus 39 versus uh, minus 100. So uh, there is a big, there's a wind, a gate to gate wind change here. And this is likely where there's a tornado. But again, this is impacting mostly alligators. And that is the good news. Uh, that's where we had uh, the tornado warning right now. Uh, and there's the map so you can see where we are. There's nobody out here. And that's where we like tornadoes to be, in the middle of nowhere. And anybody that would live out here, 
better have evacuated because uh, this is where the storm surge is. So we're going to have a lot of these through the overnight hours where we're going to have these uh, tornado uh, warnings going throughout the nighttime hour. So uh, that is going to be an issue for sure. And then uh, when, especially when they are impacting areas that uh, are populated and that's what we will continue to watch throughout the nighttime hours. And again, eyewall not looking as organized. That's the good news, but we do have these tropical showers uh, moving in and we, we can actually do uh, some tracking while we're here as well. Uh, just to give us an idea on what the Dopplers are tracking, what storm systems and you have hail, rotation, possible tornado and see what we're looking at. We're looking at rotation and a rotation in orange. That's uh, kind of where uh, that's what prompted the National Weather Service to issue that tornado warning. Uh, we have a little rotation showing up, but we're shooting up high in the sky here. Uh, this is not going to be an issue and showing some rotation just south of the Doppler in Lake Charles as we get into northern Cameron Parish. So we got a couple of systems here uh, that will watch and this is what we're going to continue to do throughout the nighttime hours. There's not going to be any hail. What this tells us anytime we see uh, that hail moniker showing up, it just means a lot of rain and thick rain that the uh, Doppler uh, algorithms think it might be hail. But in this type of a storm, you're not going to have hail. You're just going to have a uh, very intense rainfall. And that intense rainfall right now uh, beginning to reach uh, not quite Highway 90, but certainly is along the, uh, the Highway 14 corridor, Lake Arthur, seeing some of those heavier tropical showers. And uh, you see this coming up right here. That means a new warning is just coming in. And we'll take a look at that warning right now. And and uh, they've just spread that warning uh, back to the west here uh, to include uh, the Grand Chenier area. And again, these areas, um, not too many people are going to be down here at this point because the storm surge is coming up. Uh, but this is the new uh, tornado uh, warning that just came out. And, uh, and that's what we're getting right here, right around the Grand Chenier area. And oops, I just went into a white screen right there. Don't want to do that. Uh, that uh, didn't work the way it's supposed to. But here's the latest uh, watch that we have going right along Coastal Cameron Parish. That's till 1045 this evening. Uh, normally, it'll give us people affected. Uh, 1965, but I would be willing uh, that that's half of Cameron. Cameron population is about 3,000. Grand Chenier, a few hundred at that, and mostly camps. So uh, this is not impacting a whole lot of folks. And anybody that's in the Cameron area, I think just about everybody's out of Cameron, not impacting too many folks. But this is what we'll watch throughout the night, guys. Uh, Jim Marcel with us right now, and I think you have some uh, news updates for us as well. We sure do, Rob. Our crews everywhere as we continue to track Hurricane. Laura, we want to check in on some of the coastal regions here in Acadiana. That's right. Matthew Torres standing by live now in Vermilion Parish with an update from there. Matthew. Hey, so we're just outside of the courthouse where the courthouse, that's where the command center is, the emergency operations center. So we are going to hunker there when this uh, hurricane makes landfall. But we just stepped outside right now where we are getting that lashing of rain and strong winds. Uh, you could just see how strong it is right now with how it's moving uh, this direction. It just really came down here within the last minute. Uh, you could see with the tree moving, even with the mic, uh, with the flags uh, just down the block. And so I've been asking emergency personnel and officials around here, you know, if this area, the likelihood of it flooding, knowing the projection from the hurricane center, uh, they're saying at this point they don't think it's going to flood, but nonetheless, you could see and feel uh, what Mother Nature is now unleashing here uh, with all of the rain and the wind that's really uh, blasting us. We are in a safe spot where we can easily just enter back into the building. The command center is actually on the second floor, uh, so therefore it gives us at least that little bit more security. We did speak to the Vermilion Parish uh, Sheriff earlier who says that people should be nervous despite past hurricanes that they may have survived and have experienced. They say with it being so close to being a Category 5 hurricane, this is not the time to let your guard down. He is actually in a different building, uh, getting ready with all of the uh, equipment in case there are any rescue and searches uh, needing to take place. But with all of the cars just parked outside of this courthouse, don't be fooled. These aren't residents, but clearly uh, emergency personnel who are gathering here at the command center as now we are experiencing the strength of the hurricane making its way here. So we'll set things back over to you. All righty, thank you, Matthew. That's our Matthew Torres in Vermilion Parish outside the courthouse there in Abbeville. You know, residents across Acadiana have been spending a few days preparing for this storm. As we've been heeding the warnings, even businesses along the coast are preparing themselves for the storm. We'll show you some video 
from Erath, a community that knows oh so well the strength of a impact of a hurricane. Champagne's grocery is using an aqua dam to keep itself protected from the storm surge. We've seen other businesses along the coast, including at some at the port of Iberia, use dams just like this one to protect themselves. Lake Charles is expecting to see winds in the excess of 100 miles an hour and nearly 10 feet of storm surge. Plus, already the city is feeling Laura's wrath. Let's check in with Chris Welty. He joins us live in Lake Charles tonight. Chris. Hey, Jim Marcel. We're actually hunkering down in our hotel room right now. Uh, earlier this evening, we had a very ominous message come over the intercom system. Let me see if I can get that played for you here. And just take a listen. And that's just a portion of the message that has played several times here in our hotel room. We have since closed the curtains here. We're not planning to sleep in the actual room. Uh, and our photojournalist, Blake Blanchard, he had a room across the hall for me. And uh, his side of the tower is actually without power. So we do have air mattresses that the station provided with us. So uh, we'll try and get to an interior area and put in our air mattresses, blow those up. Uh, but we're right now we are going to stay out of the actual room as soon as the storm does get a little bit closer here in the lake charles area and here at the laberge hotel they did close all amenities so the casinos closed the restaurants are closed and we're told that there's limited housekeeping staff so everyone here is really riding out the storm at their own chances here at the laberge hotel in lake charles for now live in lake charles chris waltz ktc tv3 and from Calcasieu Parish, let's head a little bit farther east over to Jeff Davis Parish. Some residents in Jennings telling ABC's Sydney Kern that they have no plans to leave. It was a rush to the market. It's oh, been crazy. Extremely. Those in Jennings, 30 minutes east of Lake Charles, all had the same idea. Stock up. Just getting a few last things before the storm. I have six kids at home. My fiance is offshore at work, so... Just trying to get everything before. Issued here a voluntary evacuation, so many decided to stay. It's just easier with the uh, the family, and uh, my mother lives uh, next door, and so kind of she wasn't going to leave, so we wanted to just stay and uh, watch over her house and our house. That means windows are boarded up, loose items are tied down, some businesses already decided to close. Even though people here are prepared, there's still concern. I have a big old, old oak tree on top of my house and I'm scared to death because that's where me and me, see and now I'm going to cry, but I don't want oh, to, okay. but me and my grandson live there together and I'm scared that we, you know, might not have a home. A category four hurricane is heading just west of them. Been watching the weather 24-7. Uh, it's unbelievable and we're not even near going to be like the other people that are really in the past, you know, I mean. It, it's scary. Until the storm arrives later this evening, preparation is the main focus. In Jennings, Sydney Kern, WBRZ News 2. There have been so many people reaching out to us wanting to know about I-10 all day today. People asking what was the circumstances surrounding I-10 had the interstate closed. We do know that the interstate is closed now. A portion of I-10 that adding to some of the challenges for anyone who may have been trying to make their way out of this uh, path of mm -hmm. Laura later this evening. Yeah, it seems like the state is really just trying to uh, close in the storm. So I-10 eastbound is shut down at the Texas-Louisiana border. I-10 westbound is shut down just past the Basin Bridge if, as you're headed uh, toward Acadiana. Let's check in now with Katie Easter. She joins us live near I-10 and I-49 with more on what went into the decision to shut down the interstate. Katie. That's right, DOTD did shut down the interstate around 830 this evening, but you can see in here there are still cars on the interstate. And now that was because State Trooper Thomas Gosson told me for the safety of the troopers, they will not be out here enforcing it, but they are wanting everybody to avoid I-10 as much as possible. That's why we're right here at the interstate or at the exit for I-49. So if you do still want to evacuate and you need to evacuate, please use I-49 
come through Lafayette, find an alternative route, a route. And of course, I was going to tell you guys again to go on to 511LA.org and you can see, you know, the most recent road closures. You can see the most recent road conditions. So keep up with your road routes there. So again, I-10 is shut down. However, troopers are not out here enforcing it, but that is for their own safety. So please, they are asking, do not use I-10 as much as possible. Find a new alternate route. And of course, we did hear from uh, Chief Executive Office or Communication Officer Jamie Angel at LCG a while ago, and he did confirm that ambulances will not be able to respond once the winds get up to 50 miles per hour. So that is why it is so important for nobody to be out in these conditions driving unless you absolutely have to. And they say if you do drive, do not use your hazards, drive under the speed limit and just use as much caution as possible. Live in Lafayette, Katie Easter, KTC TV3. Well, Hurricane Laura is still a cat four at this hour. And as many of you may remember, Hurricane Katrina was a category three. And we all remember the devastation we saw with that residents from New Orleans on Westward, taking this storm very serious. Meteorologist Rob Marciano reporting tonight from Lake Charles. Tonight, the time to evacuate is over. Laura's coming ashore. Packing 145 mile per hour winds and what the National Hurricane Center is calling unsurvivable storm surge. Here come the first bands of Hurricane Laura. It's only gonna get worse. Hurricane hunters flying into Laura's eye today. The storm now more than 400 miles across. The surge from this storm is going to push water for miles inland at a height of 10 to 15 feet. That's water easily up and over my head. That's up and over this roof line. The surge will be even higher than that near the coast, and it's coming in the middle of the night. We met Freddie Rosti, who has to ride out the storm at this Lake Charles flood bank. We're hoping that this wall does what it was made for. So that he can supply hospitals with needed blood. I've been doing it for 30 years and that's what I'm here for. Louisiana's governor activating the entire National Guard. Trucks that can be used for high water rescues staging north of New Orleans. And if you think you're safe because you made it through Rita in southwest Louisiana, understand this storm is going to be more powerful. The military evacuating B-52 stratofortresses from Barksdale Air Force Base. Our Matt Gutman in Beaumont, Texas. And officials are especially concerned about Beaumont here and Port Arthur, home to 55% of the nation's strategic oil reserves, most of its jet fuel, and also some of the biggest refineries in the country. Back in Lake Charles, the mayor tells me he's worried too many have decided to ride it out. I'm to be honest, I am concerned that uh, we didn't have the evacuation numbers that uh, we probably should have. The people we talked to that are staying say they survived Hurricane Rita 15 years ago. Problem is, this is a bigger storm. It's going to have a bigger surge. It'll, water will cover much of the city of Lake Charles, not to mention the winds widespread of 100 miles an hour. That'll be like a giant tornado cutting across southwest Louisiana. It's going to be devastating, and life here is going to be much different after Hurricane Laura blows through. Rob Marciano, ABC News, Lake Charles, Louisiana. And we know the conditions look much different out there in Lake mm -hmm. Charles right now. They absolutely do. Rob standing by with the latest observations. Rob, what are you seeing here as we're well into the 10 o'clock hour? Yeah, well, things are beginning to pick up wind wise as we get over toward Lake Charles. And some of you may remember when Rob Marciano was the chief meteorologist over at KPLC back Sometime in the 90s, I'm probably dating him, but his beard is getting gray too, just by the way. So here we go with the storm. Uh, well, that's my, that's my dig. Rob, sorry, if you're watching, we love you. You know that. You can send me a text though later. Tell me what you're doing later on tonight. So anyway, here we go. Uh, what you got going here with the storm? Again, starting to bear down. We start starting to see these tropical rain bands work their way into the area. Again, we have a tornado watch for the entire region. Uh, we have tornado warning going for uh, portions of Calcasieu Parish that we're seeing right now. Uh, Cameron Parish again out in the open marsh. But I want to show you again these strong rain bands coming in. This is where the heavy rains coming in, and this is just along and south of. Uh, we'll say the Erath Delcom area, but moving inland and getting beyond where people have evacuated. And this is where we're going to start to see the winds picking up with the storm uh, for sure. Now, I did have a graphic prepared, uh, maybe not. Let me just go through it. I did have something set up where I was uh, plotting up some of the latest uh, wind uh, uh, gusts that we've seen across the area. And I want to make sure I can show that to you right now. And I'm just going to make sure I load that in here. 
and here it be. Okay, so this is what we got uh, wind gust wise. I was just looking at these uh, wind gusts and while, while we have this on the air, these are wind gusts in miles per hour. I want to just take a look at uh, our tide gauges uh, as we get to, um, uh, that's the Bing Pass, Amaretta Pass. We want uh, Freshwater City, the Freshwater Canal Locks. That's kind of our, uh, we are running about five feet above uh, normal tide. High tide uh, is going to be later on tonight between uh, uh, right around 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. And the tide stays high through 9 a.m. So unfortunately, when the high tide is going to be here, we're going to have uh, the peak storm surge as well. So uh, these are the current wind gusts. I'm just going to load this back up and I'm going to throw one more item in here. Uh, but you can see some of the gusts offshore. Uh, 80 miles an hour here. We got 41 at Salt Point. I uh, haven't seen a gust higher than 48 at Sippermore Point, but I bet you we got some gusts going there. 50 down at the Freshwater Canal Locks. We got 51 in Pecan Island, 46 at Lacassine. 58 at Calcasieu Pass and notice Lake Charles, uh, you're closer to the eye here, 45 mile an hour winds, Lafayette's at 31, New Iberia at 43, Patterson at 29, uh, and uh, then we get down along the coast uh, uh, in the 40s right now, but uh, we're starting to see those winds beginning to pick up across the area, and I'm just going to load uh, one more item in here to see if our latest graph model is in. Uh, we should be close to that time, and I want to be able to show that to you. So uh, just bear with me as we continue to uh, pull things up here. And here's the graph model, and I have to check uh, to see what uh, the time frame is. And uh, not quite in yet. Uh, so uh, we'll wait for that to come in, but uh, we can show you uh, what's going on currently with the storm and radar wise as well. So uh, let's get back into it and show you uh, the latest uh, with respect to radar because it's going to be all about the radar coming up. And uh, Bradley, you let me know when you got some velocities going on there. Uh, we'll take a look at that as well. But the storm, it's moving and it's moving along and it's chugging along. And uh, the only good thing that we can say about this system is that it's moving moving and it's moving smartly. It's not going to be one of these slow moving storms that takes a, a better part of a day to get through here. This is going to be moving along, but this is where the damaging winds are uh, right around this donut right here. That's uh, the eye wall and that's where you're going to have the most intense winds. And notice during the course of this loop, we saw lightning perking up. Now that's not happening anymore. So that is certainly good news. That means uh, we're not strengthening anymore, but this is a very intense Intense hurricane that's going to be making landfall in Cameron Parish uh, just within hours. And again, we showed you these wind gusts across the area. And uh, again, uh, this one cell right here that's uh, right by uh, Sippermore Point. Let me just go ahead and uh, zoom in on this uh, particular area. This is where we're seeing lightning right now uh, that is just north of Sippermore Point. We'll get in even closer, just north of the Weeks Island area, just south of Delcom. Uh, so this is a pretty intense cell that's showing up right now in around the Delcom area so we'll watch that it's amazing how fast the images move I have these set to move very slowly and they're just hauling uh, because uh, things at cloud level are moving in the 50 60 mile an hour range and we're not seeing those winds translate to the ground yet but you're likely seeing that in some of these rain bands uh, as they are the most intense rain bands they'll bring down those strong winds across the area and again uh, yeah we have a hurricane right here and we we'll, we'll can go right into the center of the storm uh, that is just bearing down now on Cameron. Uh, you can see pretty much ground zero here, uh, Cameron, Louisiana, and uh, the eye wall just about offshore, and we showed you that on the radar as well. And the crazy thing is with these uh, hurricanes, uh, when you get into this eye, you might even see stars. So that's going to happen in Cameron. First, the winds are going to pick up rapidly over 100 mile an hour winds. It's going to be horrendous. Uh, your winds are going to be out of the east. 
Then it calms down, and then the bottom part of this hurricane comes through, and the winds come around out of the west and south, and just as uh, ferocious as the winds that you're seeing, going to see coming out of the east and northeast initially as this continues to ride to the north-northwest. 150 mile per hour winds. We think we've leveled off. The pressure is leveled off, and that is the good news. We're not seeing lightning near the center. And you can see where the icon is. You can see how much the hurricane has moved since just 10 o'clock. That was uh, 10, It's 1025 right now. So things are moving along quickly at about 25 miles an hour. And again, okay, uh, the, the track is fixed. We had a little low here. Still expect it to be. This is a pretty amazing. A Category 2 storm uh, up around uh, Jasper, the Fort Polk area, Leesville. Uh, I don't know how many uh, Category 2 storms have ridden right up the Sabine River, but this is going to be one of them and very intense. And notice the Hurricane Center does have the track uh, kind of peeling a little bit into eastern Texas uh, through the Toledo Bend area is going to get rocked. Uh, still a tropical storm as we get up here uh, into the northern part of Louisiana and into Arkansas. It's still a tropical storm. Here's the uh, Louisiana line. So this is going to be not getting down to a tropical storm strength, 60 mile an hour winds until it gets up into Arkansas. So uh, got another tornado warning. Let me just back it up to the Doppler right now. And uh, that has just come in. So we'll check that out on the radar and uh, check out where the latest tornado warning or it could be the con the continuation of the warning. So uh, we'll just call up the uh, warning graphic here and it looks like it's a continuation of the warning. I'll just go over here, check out the uh, printer once again. So I have the latest uh, text tornado warning. Oh, this is uh, Iberia Parish. So this should be popping up. Uh, shortly, I got it for Iberia Parish, Vermilion Parish, Southwest. Oh, that might be uh, the edge of this particular uh, cell right here. So we'll take a look at that as well. So uh, this tornado warning in effect till 11 p.m. Uh, so uh, this is that uh, cell that's right here more than likely. So uh, let's call up the, the sweeps once again and take a look at this. Uh, again, that's that cell that's got the lightning going on. Uh, that's uh, where we have uh, the warning going right now. And I, I'm, I'm supposing, I haven't seen it plot up here, uh, that we should have that warning showing up here. Uh, but uh, And I don't quite see it. That's the tracker right there. Let's go back over to the warnings. I guess this is for the Vermilion Parish, so uh, we'll go back to the sweeps here and that's probably for this cell right here but we don't see uh, that uh, tornado warning overtly showing up on the imagery here so I'm wondering uh, if uh, the system hasn't plotted it up quite yet so we may have a little data issues coming into the weather system so we'll make sure that is squared away uh, for our next weather cast but uh, tornado warning let's just say this cell right here is a mean cell uh, that's showing that lightning right now that's in coastal Liberia Parish and that's working its way into Vermilion Parish so we're going to have these warnings throughout the nighttime hours. And on top of that, your wind's already gusting 50 to 60. And you could have a small spin up of 90 or 100 mile per hour winds uh, with uh, a couple of these uh, isolated tornadoes. Uh, looking at the, the uh, velocity imagery, that's not giving us a whole lot here. Uh, but we can see uh, the changes and when you go from a uniform color and then you don't have a uniform color. Those are the areas that you have to watch. This area right here, right south of the uh, Vermilion Cameron Parish line and then we have those very intense winds uh, just offshore right now that are incredibly uh, intense uh, just uh, interrogating this right here 141 mile per hour winds again wherever I'm pointing is going to show up on the right hand side of the screen so 141 mile an hour winds moving away from the Lake Charles Doppler and then we go over here and we'll see what kind of winds we get 107 mile an hour winds going toward the Lake Charles Doppler but this is a cloud level uh, not necessarily working its way down to the ground but we're starting to see those big winds getting very close to moving inland uh, we'll query some of the winds here inland uh, uh, across portions of uh, Vermilion Parish and again uh, aloft we got some pretty strong winds going so we're going to see uh, some of these areas uh, work uh, with those uh, tropical rain bands we're going to see some of that uh, some of that uh, working its way down to the ground so the big uh, the strong winds beginning to develop uh, I didn't see many uh, high wind gusts in around the Abbeville area but that is certainly a possibility and again we see those strong cells uh, working their way into Cameron but this right here 
This is the bad news. This is the bad news bears. That's going to be moving in. And it looks like uh, eyeballing it about another 30 miles to go. So it's moving north at 15. Uh, so this is going to be the outer eye wall is going to be reaching Cameron. Uh, we got 1030 going right now. That's going to be reaching Cameron right around, uh, we'll say, 1230. So our estimate for landfall right around midnight, give or take your hour, still uh, looks to be straight on at this point. So uh, that's what we have going. Uh, these strong rain bands now moving through uh, Western Iberia Parish into Vermilion Parish. Uh, we have a big swath, it looks like, of a tornado warning going here. I got to just take off this tornado watch, uh, so we'll get that out of here so we can just see some of the red showing up. Uh, but a busy night ahead and a lot of heavy duty rainfall on the way. And you can see that eye bearing down pretty much straight on Cameron this evening. Uh, and it's going to be uh, in about an hour. Uh, I would say Cameron is going to start to see 100 mile an hour winds and uh, gusts higher than that as that system moves on through. For now, uh, Bradley, you got something. Let's uh, take a look at what Bradley has. Uh, uh, if we could throw it max two here, I'll take a look at some of the velocity, uh, what we have going on. It looks like, Rob, that tornado warning just kind of got extended from the one in uh, Vermilion Parish. Now looks like uh, some heavy winds moving just to the west of the Sippermore Point area here. And then again, we still have that tornado warning for most of Central and Southern Vermilion Parish, kind of close to the Erath and Kaplan area here, some strong winds as well. Uh, and again, pretty close to the, it looks like, Pecan Island area, as well as these tropical rain bands that move on through. And these are generally going to be moving and lifting further inland here. So we expect these uh, gusty conditions, higher winds to start making their way into some of our northern parishes here over the next several hours. Rob? Yeah, and that's going to be the story as the night progresses on. Uh, you know, the, these uh, tropical rain bands coming in, and we'll be showing you the... Uh, uh, this, but we're not going to be showing you again. You know, we're going to show you the satellite imagery, but the track where we know where the storm is. We know it's a category four, um, and then we'll just dispense with the track, the forecast track itself, and watch the latest model guidance. And again, uh, very intense weather moving in. Uh, I think it really picks up uh, this. Uh, we'll say the I-10 parishes right around 1 a.m. I think this model looks very good to me uh, on uh, where we're going to see uh, timing-wise and what we're going to see timing-wise and. And then 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, it's going to be in and out tropical showers, gusty winds, and then you're going to have some uh, showers that are very intense that will produce more than likely gusts to 65, 75 mile an hour winds at the very least. So uh, we know the surge is going to be big. We know the wind forecast. I don't know if this is the latest forecast data. This looks like it might be a little bit updated. Uh, but uh, has gusts 62 in Lafayette, that's going to be high. So a lot of these gusts may be a little bit on the high side, but not so as you get into Cameron Parish, as uh, you'll see here. Look at this. The eye is right over Cameron. The winds are down to 17, uh, but Hackberry, just 25 miles to the north, still seeing 100 mile an hour winds. 100 mile an hour winds in Lake Charles, Vinton, uh, Westlake area, back through Bell City, over toward Lake Arthur and our friends down in Thornwell. It's going to be rough. Grand Chenier, big winds and storm surge. It's going to get wiped down there. And, and one of the things that was so heartbreaking to see with Hurricanes Rita and Ike was the saltwater penetration that came in that not only did the damage but you go down here you go along highway 82 you looked out of the right side of your window if you're traveling westward and you see all these multi hundred year old live oaks that have died because of that saltwater intrusion into the coastal marshes and the chenilles of Cameron and also Vermilion Parish as well. So uh, tough uh, that we see that happening to our coastline, but that is the nature of nature. It taketh away, it giveth and taketh away, and it's been taking away a lot of our coastal marshes. And one of the things that will be interesting to see after this storm and the high winds and the high storm surge, how far this storm surge penetrates inland. And that reminds me, I'm going to show you some of the before and afters associated with Rita coming up in my next weather hit, but a uh, very tough situation to see and see these kind of winds and storm surge and these 100
100 mile an hour winds that will reach as far eastward as uh, Jeff Davis Parish, perhaps in Lake Arthur. Again, these wind gusts may be a little bit overdone, but this is what we plan for. You plan for your worst case scenario and hope the winds don't get that high, but we are still talking widespread power outages, mainly say a Lafayette on westward. We're going to see gusts in the 80 mile per hour range. You can take 10 miles and off uh, all of these, say the computers overdoing it by 20%. You're still hitting 100 mile an hour winds uh, edging into perhaps uh, Evangeline Parish, including Allen Parish, uh, Jeff Davis Parish is going to get hit very hard. Now the center on this particular, on the graph model is a little bit farther to the east, so all these winds may be back to the west, so we're going to pull up the uh, a high resolution rapid refresh model, take a look at those wind gusts and the next weather hit as well. We call our weather cast weather hits here and uh, we'll be doing that coming up in a little bit, but uh, some rough weather ahead and uh, no candy coating it as well. Uh, the graph model rainfall still uh, uh, this looks like the still this looks like it might be uh uh, more fresher data, but I'll have to check that. I can't check the actual data run, but I know the high resolution rapid refresh. This is fresh data for sure, indicating uh, the rainfall that's going to be in the eight inch range or better uh, across portions of western Louisiana. And again, uh, tropical rainfall. And, and just mind you, when we show you those tropical rain estimates, uh, they are way over, uh, way underdone because the Doppler radar can't factor in all those little raindrops that you get. And basically in a tropical system, you get a lot of little raindrops in a very small cubic area. And that's how you step outside in a hurricane. You're instantaneously wet, you're hot, and you're cold at the same time. So uh, that's the way it works out. So guys, I think you guys have some information, some news, Jim. Yeah, we're going to move on, Rob. Thank you very much. We'll be checking in with you throughout the night, of course. Uh, but we want to head down to uh, Vermilion Parish along the coast here in Acadiana, where emergency officials are really this is their final moment to send out a message really for everybody about the safety in the days ahead. Here are Matthew Torres standing by with the director for Million Parish Office of Emergency Preparedness. Matthew. That's right. We went inside the courthouse to speak with her. Becky Bouchard with me right now. Uh, we just had a power outage uh, earlier, just a very quick one before the generators kicked in. Mm -hmm. uh, likelihood of what it is happening around us, knowing that there was a power outage earlier. Some of the wires are snapping probably, and some of the transformers may even be burning out and stuff. So the electricity is going to go out. It's not unusual in this kind of event. I mean, sometimes we've had 21 days without power. What should people know right now? I know we're already just a few hours away before the landfall of Hurricane Laura. Is there something that you still uh, can let people know? They need to stay hunkered down where they are. Don't go driving around because if there's water on the road, you can't see how deep it is and it doesn't take very much water to take your car and just go off with it. So just to stay out. And there goes another power outage. There you go. Yeah, this is one of the examples. <laughs> and I think any moment uh, the generator should kick in, hopefully. Yes, they should. Now, as we're in the middle of the dark right now, I want to continue this uh, interview. As far as being able, there you go, the power kicked in. But being able to come back here and uh, put this uh, protocol in place with all the other emergency personnel, what is it like to be here knowing that uh, a lot of people are really relying on your information? Yeah, and you have the, the reason we don't have shelters right now, you can't cohabitate with COVID going around. You don't know who's got COVID, who doesn't. You, you kind of, you don't want to get somebody sick because they're in a shelter and there's somebody with COVID that doesn't know they have it and they're there. So FEMA for the first time did a pre-position category B through the governor's office that you could get hotel rooms through the governor's office for tonight and tomorrow, just for pre-storm, then you have to go. That way they can put a family in a room and they're all there and you don't have to worry about them cohabitating with other people that may have COVID or not because a lot of them are elderly, disabled or whatever. You don't want to mix them in. So that's the first time FEMA's done it and it's only because of COVID. So it makes it a lot harder. That's why there's no shelters anywhere and your hotel rooms are full. Have you heard a lot of frustrations from people about that? Yes. Yes, they have, you know, why do I have to go to way to Baton Rouge or to Alexandria or whatever? That's just the way it is for right now. That's it. Well, Becky, thank you for your time. Again, we are going to hunker down inside the courthouse, of course, and hopefully get the up-to-date information as soon as yes. the, uh, the hurricane makes landfall. We'll send it back to you.
Alrighty, thank you so much, Matthew. As we saw there, power outages already happening in Vermilion Parish at the courthouse there. Their backup generators kicking in. Uh, OEP Director Becky Broussard mentioning that it, in the past they have gone at least 21 days in some areas without power after a storm. So the, the latest right there from Vermilion Parish. Well, as we talk about power outages, one of the things people in this area have begun to use, of course, are generators. And of course, generator safety comes into play when you're dealing with these machines. Machines. First, never use your generator inside of your home or in your garage. The, th the issue there, carbon monoxide poisoning. That's why it is advised you do not put it inside of your home. Generators should be kept dry under a canopy or an overhang. Turn off your generator and let it cool before you refuel. As the night goes on and you may need to refuel that generator, go ahead and let it cool for a little while before refueling. Never plug a portable generator directly into a wall outlet. That can be dangerous for both you, neighbors, and electricians as well. Western part of the state will be hardest hit from Hurricane Laura uh, over in Lafouche Parish. People are still forecasted to see a storm surge of up to six feet. Here's a look at flooded roads today. This uh, photo coming from Golden Meadow there in Lafouche Parish. You see the water just overtaking that road. You, the power lines on the side of that picture there. And when you think of a hurricane, you immediately think that it's a coastal issue for the most part. Well, up in uh, uh, Shreveport, they're also preparing as well. Let's take a look at some video from earlier today from the Bossier Parish Jail. If we have that where inmates were put to work and helped fill more than 40,000 sandbags to, pr to help protect residents from flooding. Once the storm passes, those inmates will then be uh, put to work again to help clear debris and fallen trees. Well, we often hear the words hurricane hunters as we're dealing with storms and these just they're not necessarily just out there to be in the midst of it all. What they bring back is data that helps forecasters predict the path, strength and timing of tropical storms and hurricanes. And it comes from a small fleet of airplanes. They fly around through and above the storms. The hurricane hunters, this a crew from the 53rd Weather Recognizance Squadron, recently flew a mission into Hurricane Laura to collect data for the National Hurricane Center, which uses the information to create more accurate forecast models that we are depending on so heavily right now. And those images we saw earlier today, it's a, it's a one of a kind view out there too when they're up surveying those hurricanes. Uh, the Louisiana State Urban Search and Rescue Task Force, we should also mention, is deployed. That crew managed actually by the state fire marshal's office. It's called by local authorities when there's a potential need for specialized equipment. That's right. And you know, so much, so many intricate parts that play such a major role in, in forecasting and getting things done at this time. I think we're going to go on ahead over to weather for an update. Yeah, Rob, we're starting to, we're starting to feel or, or to hear, at least here in the studio, we're starting to hear some of the uh, heavy rain outside Winds the and studios rain. Yeah. in Lafayette. And just looking on social media, uh, it, you could tell like some people are wondering where it is. Okay, now it's windy, now it's breezy, here comes the rain. Um, but uh, again, we're still a few hours away from landfall, but when you're looking at the radar, you can see the, that tropical activity starting to come uh, further inland. Yes, yeah, the night is going on. Of course, the conditions will change, but like you said, people starting to wonder, what is this? What am I, what am I in for? Is this just the beginning? Um, how long will this last? Uh, those are the questions that people are asking. What will I get in my area? Again, the meteorologists are working so hard to try and pinpoint things in as many areas as possible. We may not be able to mm -hmm. talk directly about your home, but in your general vicinity um, as the information is coming out. Rob standing by on the weather wall right now. Rob, um, what can you tell us about what we're experiencing here at 1045? We're just about 1045 into well, the night. Yeah, tropical rain bands moving in pretty much on schedule as we get into the coastal parishes. We see uh, the eye of the storm right here just offshore uh, Louisiana right now. Uh, offshore the Cameron coastline, but more importantly, we're starting to see these heavier tropical rain bands. These are some of the uh, wind observations. These were as of about uh, 10 o'clock, so these numbers are going to be coming back up, and we'll be working on updating those numbers as we see those winds coming up. Uh, again, a uh, pretty strong rain band coming in and starting to pour some pretty big rains down into uh, portions of uh, Iberia and also uh, Vermilion Parish, and then uh, working our way in even closer. Closer. You can see some of those heavier rain bands, some lightning cloud to ground lightning. We tell you that's not good. And then uh, we go off to the west here and uh, to the southwest. And uh, we'll go ahead and 
uh, bring the eye right in. It's just sitting just offshore uh, here uh, down by uh, the uh, uh, Grand Chenier area, which is just east of Cameron. You got Creole right here. We have tornado warnings going right now for these cells that are pushing through uh, the Cameron area. So uh, we're going to have some pretty intense uh, storms coming in through uh, Cameron. This is going to be the hot spot over the next few hours. Here's some storm tracking. Uh, and interestingly enough, look, uh, the Doppler thinking this is a tornado and a huge tornado, but they're uh, detecting big winds. And for all intents and purposes, this uh, squall right here is one huge uh, tornadic type system, more than likely. And you are going to have many spins within here. You see these little notches right here? This is where the winds are really gusting uh, on the inside of the eye wall. And then the winds just drop off as you go farther to the south. So uh, let's take a look at the uh, velocity data here. And again, we can see some of the stronger velocities beginning to work their way into Cameron Parish at this hour. Uh, we'll just stop this right here and we'll uh, kind of show you uh, again. Uh, let's do some querying of this if we can. And uh, we'll take a look at some of the winds that are showing up in around the Cameron area, 82, uh, 74. And again, we go right offshore out here and we're seeing 141 show up. So uh, very intense winds. But uh, we go uh, off uh, to uh, the east, uh, we'll go. And uh, we'll bring this in. We'll stop this over here. We'll uh, grab it and hopefully we'll be able to move this on over. And again, we're seeing some pretty strong wind changes uh, just south of uh, the uh, just south of uh, Abbeville area. So do we have any warnings out on this? Yeah, well, we're tracking the Doppler's tracking this and this may be our next warned area just north of the Forked Island area. So let's get in a little bit closer here uh, north and uh, northeast of the Forked Island area. We'll bring in the sweeps once again and uh, we'll get to uh, query this uh, right here. Stop it, Rob, and then hit the query button. Stop it and query buttons got it. It's got a highlight and sometimes it just doesn't want to work. Uh, we'll see if this works right here, but this is uh, an area 96 and then we see that green area 35. So uh, just to the south and west of the Abbeville area, uh, we are looking at a pretty intense uh, cell right here uh, that is just southwest of Abbeville. It's just northeast of the Forked Island area. So this looks to be skirting just to the south of the Kaplan area. Might see a tornado warning coming out on this. And this is what we do as meteorologists, try to anticipate what the National Weather Service may do, what the National Hurricane Center may do. Uh, but this is a couplet right here that is probably producing damaging winds in some way, shape or form. And this is reaching south of Highway 14, just south of the Kaplan area. Uh, but uh, let's see if we can drill down and see if there's any more towns here. If we can, I don't know if we'll be able to uh, see anything more. Uh, Thiel is down here. It's a very small community. Uh, here's LA 35. So this is heading right up toward LA 35 and LA 335, just south of the Kaplan area. So there we have Kaplan right there. So we'll continue to watch that as it goes on. Now, I brought in a more a higher resolution uh, imagery. This is the predictive radar, and this is hour by hour. And we'll be watching the winds. Uh, this is pretty much on east at 19, gusts to 39. That's probably what we're seeing in Lafayette right now. And we'll take a look at the wind product associated with this. Uh, but notice the winds pick up in Lafayette as we get to 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And again, center of the storm right over Cameron. That looks uh, pretty good to us. And again, those heavy duty tropical rain bands. And then when you're seeing magenta, these are the storms that are going to get the winds kicking up uh, more than likely and producing damaging winds. And then the core of the storm here by Lake Charles is going to be just incredible. And uh, if I get a little bit more time, we'll pull up uh, some of the wind and the rain products with the predictive radar because this model updates once an hour. And that gives us a much greater feel for trends and how things are going. And we'll paint the picture hour by hour how we think things are going to go on. Uh, by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, things are beginning to calm down. Still, hurricane conditions up toward uh, Vernon Parish and Sabine Parish and points to the north for Peds as well. Uh, but uh, the I-10 Parish is beginning to calm down, but still some tropical rain bands that could be problematic through mid-morning tomorrow. And then we'll be watching these renegade uh, runaway tropical rain bands that will 
be detaching from the storm. And typically when a hurricane makes landfall, uh, the rain bands move outward from the storm and so does the wind field. It begins to spread out. So it's going to be a breezy day tomorrow. Still gusts of 43 right around uh, above 40 at uh, lunchtime. And then the winds turning around out of the southwest may be a little sun in between. Uh, that is certainly a possibility uh, with the storm moving away. And that's the weird thing about tropical systems, especially when you get on the western southwestern flank, you'll see sunshine and then uh, lumbering dark tropical clouds uh, looming on the horizon. And that's probably what we're going to see through tomorrow afternoon. So again, the eye bearing down on the Cameron coastline. We're probably about 60, 90 minutes away from officially calling this at landfall and got to give hats off to the National Hurricane Center. Uh, once they got their forecast tracked down, it didn't vary much going back through yesterday uh, with an upper Texas, southwest Louisiana coast uh, landfall. And unfortunately for much of Louisiana, it's going to be a, mostly a Louisiana event, but winds are going to be pretty rough you get, as you get into Orange and also Beaumont, Texas. So pretty intense storm moving on through the area. And again, I'm just going to fast forward. <clears throat> through these graphics and and I thought I was going to have uh, my hurricane reader graphics at the top of the show. So let me just go through that once again, uh, but I want to kind of show you uh, not this because we all know the the, the factors that we're going to have uh, coming up and that's been posted on my web page as well on uh, my Facebook page, but just kind of want to show you this is going back to Hurricane Rita. This is a NASA satellite imagery. This is 2005. Uh, Hurricane Rita made landfall over here by Sabine Pass. So uh, this is kind of lower depth, but uh, gives you an idea. And all the green is land area, right? Or marsh area that is not filled with water. We have some marshy areas. That's your darker shaded areas. Uh, but this was before the hurricane. And four days after the storm, NASA got another picture of what it looked like. This is four days after the storm. And look at this. You see all these dark areas? That's the Gulf of Mexico. And this is exactly what we're going to see, only we're going to see better images tomorrow or when the skies clear out. The problem is you can't get these images right away if there's lots of clouds over the area. So this is the before picture and this is the after picture. And notice all that soil water. Remember we were showing you that map that was inundating all of Cameron Parish or a good part of it with Gulf of Mexico water. And this is four days after the storm. This is after the water had a chance to go down. It penetrated right along this line here just from near the Lake Arthur area, Delcom, Erath, and we had a little bump um, just east of the Delcom area. Uh, so an incredible storm surge with that storm. And unfortunately, guys, this looks like it's going to beat it. Uh, 15 to 20 foot uh, high water marks, high water marks. The surge officially, I think, was uh, about 15 to 18. And we're going for a surge now 15 to 20. So the high water marks this time around are going to be even higher 10 to 15 feet along the rest of the Acadiana coastline. And that's fully what I expect uh, after this storm is uh, all said and done and goes in the record books. And it's going to be a record storm for sure. Yeah, it's really hard to hear that, Rob. You know, we, we've seen other um, reports as well that just some parts of the state are going to look like the Gulf of Mexico tomorrow. That is right, and it's so hard to get wrap your head around it, but more than 1,500 miles are going to be uh, inundated with Gulf of Mexico water, and it's not just going to be flooding at your ankles. You're talking water way over my head, 10 feet tall. Uh, and and it looks like the Gulf. I can remember we had some video back in the day, some folks uh, that were uh, south of the Gaydon area that rode out the storm, mm -hmm. and you could see the water coming through their front door, and they had two or three foot waves and waves sloshing through their bottom floor, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, and I pray that nobody stayed behind on this, and hopefully they heeded our warnings. And when we were talking a big storm surge, I started talking about a storm surge before there were even storm surge estimates. And uh, you know, it's it, it it might be stupid of me, but uh, history dictates that uh, when you see a two or three coming, that a 10 to 15 foot surge is certainly in the cards. And now we are dealing with a three or four, so it's a 15 to 20 foot surge along the coast. And that water, when it comes in, the main bulge comes in here, and then it slow percolates and works its way eastward so it's like somebody throws a bucket of water here but you know the bucket of water is not just going to go in this direction it's going to splat out in both directions and with a south wind it's just going to pile drive that water uh, to pretty much the same points along highway 14 mm -hmm. and along and south of highway 14 and along and south 
of Highway 90. Well, you've been saying uh, since the start of this season that conditions um, were warranted of what would be a remarkable season with strong storms and here we are dealing with Laura. Yeah, Laura coming in on the anniversary of Hurricane Andrew that struck uh, mm -hmm. uh, some 28 years ago. That was the first hurricane I really worked uh, in Lafayette. Uh, I did work hurricanes before that in the mid 80s before I got into TV. But, uh, uh, you know, you look at these forecasts each and every year. And when I got into television, I really got more into tropical meteorology uh, per se and started following Dr. Gray and his mm -hmm. forecast, his seasonal forecast. And, you know, those seasonal forecasts, oh, it's going to be a busy season, not going to be a busy season. Each year is different. It only takes one storm to impact you and uh, and it's a bad season. So, but this year, uh, Dr. Klotzba, who's taken up Dr. Gray's mantle. Dr. Gray passed away uh, four or five years ago. Uh, Klotzba out of Colorado State has been uh, uh, talking about these hurricane seasonal forecasts. And this year, not only him, but there's 20 other uh, forecast groups, universities that make these forecasts. And we knew uh, the atmosphere was going to be turned on this year. The Gulf of Mexico, super hot. Uh, the Atlantic, hotter than normal. Uh, wind shear was expected to be uh, below normal because of a uh, lack of an El Nino and more of a mm. La Nina pattern. There were a lot of factors. Pressure's a little bit below normal through the Caribbean uh, and in the tropical Atlantic. And we haven't seen the Atlantic this warm. The Gulf has been, a, has been a, a bath water going over the last 20, 30 years. That's just been a trend overall. Uh, but uh, this year we knew it was going to be busier. And the more storms you have, the better chance you're going to have of strikes. And this mm -hmm. year, uh, in any given year, uh, the risk of a hurricane hitting the coastline uh, across the Gulf of Mexico from the Florida Panhandle uh, to Brownsville is about once uh, about a 30 percent chance, right? Uh, this year, that chance was up near 50%. It was at 47, 48, 49%. I can't remember the exact number. So 50-50 chance of a major hurricane, one or more, striking the coast, the Gulf Coast. And here we are only in the moving into the last week of August. We have all of September and probably at least half of October to get through. And there is a system that's coming off the African coastline that we may start tracking uh, after this storm system. So it's going to be a long tropical season. And this may be the first of maybe a couple uh, of uh, big storms that we're going to have to deal with. Unfortunately, we're on the business end of this one. And we don't want to wish it on anybody else. But no. I think one hurricane per state is enough. Sure uh, is. Agreed. Right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Thank we'll you, check Rob. back in with you in just a bit. Well, moving on now, our, as we've mentioned, you know, our crews are around and about, and we've told you that we were just starting to hear some winds and rains here at the TV3 studio in Lafayette. Let's get a check of the conditions outside. Katie Easter joining us live in Lafayette. Katie, what are you seeing out there? Well, the DOTD has shut down I-10 from the Texas-Louisiana state line all the way to the Ashafalaya Basin. And now, of course, you can see and hear cars on I-10, but that is because the DOTD is unable to block off each exit with barriers due to the expected high winds. And now that is coming from a spokesperson with the DOTD. They are asking for anyone seeking to evacuate to find alternative routes, including I-49, which is where we are off to right now. And DOTD is asking those choosing to leave now to drive care Carefully under the speed limit and when things get worse, get off of the road. And now if you want to keep up with the road conditions because you are deciding to leave, the best way to do that is going to be their website, which is 511LA.org. Live in Lafayette, Katie Easter, KTC TV3. All right, Katie, thanks. And western portions of Acadiana expecting to see the worst conditions out there. Let's check in now with the mayor of Church Point on the phone with us right now. We have Mayor Ryan Spanky Mesh. Uh, Mayor Mesh, what are you seeing there in Church Point? Uh, it's just really starting, uh, it's drizzling rain, wind starting to kind of come in. It's the beginning of the of a long night, let's say that. Yeah, sure is. What What, what is the police department telling you? Um, are they responding to any calls right now? No, it's, uh, we've been under curfew uh, since uh, about 7 o'clock, mm -hmm. and uh, nothing that... Uh, you know, nothing big, big right now, you know, just uh, driving around, making sure everybody's hunkered down and ready to get through the storm. What's your impression? Are people taking it seriously? Are people abiding by the curfew? Yeah, so far, uh, like I said, I'm, uh, I'm going to be up all night uh, just watching, making sure everything's going good. 
And uh, so far, like I'm looking at Main Street right now, and I don't see a car in sight. Mm, that's good. At least people are following that order. Uh, do you think there have been people there in Church Point who have evacuated? Um, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't heard too many. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they're comparing this one to uh, Rita style, you know. Um, I haven't heard a lot of people uh, evacuating, but there are some. Mm -hmm. And with Rita, like, yeah, we've been hearing that comparison a lot over the past few days. With Rita, what sort of conditions did Church Point see back then? We didn't see as bad as we did in Lily. When Lily came in in 02, it was more of a devastation. Uh, Rita was, you know, your regular uh, trees down, power down, but it wasn't a, a, a hard, hard lick. Mm -hmm. Tonight, what's your message to the people of Church Point, uh, your friends, your family there in Acadia Parish? What are you telling them? Stay inside and ride this thing out. Uh, be careful. Don't go by the windows. Uh, if a tornado comes, go to the center of the house. Uh, just the regular things that we've all come to know as over the years with all the hurricanes we've went through. Mm -hmm. All right, Mayor Sp Ryan Spanky Mesh there in Church Point. Sir, thanks so much for your time. We'll be talking to you over the next few days. Stay safe. Thank you. Y'all have a good night. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, so there in Acadia Parish in Church Point, the mayor saying, you know, he thinks people are abiding by the curfew, looking out there on Main Street in Church Point, Marcel. So that's some good news, and that kind of echoes what we saw on the roads a little earlier tonight, too. Absolutely, it does. We know Acadia Parish will be feeling some strong effects of this storm, so good to hear that the people there are adhering to the warnings and watches. One of the, another hard-hit area that we know is Lake Charles. Um, Something they've never mm -hmm. seen before is what's being said for that area. Chris Welty standing by live. He's hunkered down in a hotel there. Oh, no, he's made he it outside, outside it looks, at yeah. this point. Welty, what can you tell us about what you're seeing in Lake Charles? Hey, Marcel. Yeah, we were hunkered down in our hotel room. We decided to step out for a minute and let me step out a little bit closer. That wind is pretty intense whipping uh, right here, but uh, as you can see, the wind and the rain are really starting to pick up. Con conditions are deteriorating fastly out here in uh, Lake Charles. Every once in a while, we get those strong, strong gusts. And right now, we're standing underneath the awning to the hotel entrance here at La Berge. And I never thought I'd say this in my career. Actually, just a few feet over from me is Jim Cantori from the Weather Channel uh, doing live shots out here as well. But the wind is really starting to pick up. And just a minute ago, I got a notification on my phone to make sure to hunker down and uh, saying that this is devastating life uh, threatening situation here and people should not be out. We did see uh, a few people out here on the road near the hotel, uh, but nobody should be out on the road in these conditions until this storm passes, especially with it being dark right now. It's a very dangerous situation out here, but uh, right now our photographer, uh, Blake Blanchard, he's tucked into a corner with our camera, so he is protected from the wind and any type of debris and I'm standing uh, as much as possible. Uh, by the wall as well to be protected from any type of debris. But so far we haven't seen any of that flying debris just yet, but uh, the wind and the rain is really starting to pick up here in Lake Charles and uh, our hotel earlier this evening and periodically every 30 minutes or so, we get these warning uh, messages uh, saying to close the curtains, to not sleep near the windows, and if the power goes out to go into an interior area to fill the tub up with water as well. This is going to be a very intense situation here in Lake Charles over the next few hours. And we're of course going to continue monitoring the situation. Now the amenities here at the hotel, everything is shut down as far as the casino, the Lazy River, uh, restaurants. If you are here at the hotel, you really are riding it out at your own risk. The hotel made that very clear to us whenever we walked in. And as far as uh, housekeeping staff, they do have very limited housekeeping staff. So uh, we're gonna continue just being as safe as possible. A lot of people are messaging us. Uh, we're being smart about this. We're only going out uh, when we do feel like it's safe. And probably in a little bit, it won't be safe for us to be out here that much longer. So 
Uh, we'll get what we can as far as video wise out here, but we're not going to put our lives in danger uh, for the story. But of course, we're definitely going to cover the situation as it unfolds. And uh, I know a lot of people have been messaging both myself and Blake on social media, asking about us, making sure that we stay safe. And trust me, we're playing this by the book and being as safe as possible. But we do want to bring this to you because this is a very historic moment, unprecedented times, uh, wins almost near category five uh, status uh, from what we were hearing earlier this evening. So uh, we definitely want to continue monitoring the situation. And of course, we'll bring you the very latest. Uh, a lot of people here though, they did evacuate, which is good news. But earlier we did find one man who is making those extremely last minute preparations and he was boarding up his home and it was really a family affair on that block it, it was uh, the gentleman we interviewed his son lived next door his daughter was down the road and his mom was a couple blocks over and he told us that he rode out the past three storms here and uh, the worst that has happened for him was his roof came off and uh, when we were asking him because he's just a few blocks away from the the lake here and we asked him, are you nervous at all? He said it just comes with the territory. And we said, look, we're hearing that there could be storm surge in this area of up to nine feet or more. And he said he's prepared. He has an ax in his attic. He has a chainsaw if he needs to cut through his roof. But of course, uh, it's putting it's a very dangerous situation and no one will be rescued until this storm passes because it's simply not safe for those first responders to get out there in these conditions. So uh, if you are here in the Lake Charles area and you're watching, it's best to just hunker down, stay where you are, get to those interior rooms and uh, listen to some of those messages that we had from the hotel, like filling up the tubs with water as well uh, in case there's a need for that later on as the storm to continues to roll through. But for now, live in Lake Charles, Chris Welty, KTC TV3. The well, gusts really picking up there in Lake yeah, Charles. Yeah, we heard Welty tonight. talking about how he has seen things change over the past couple hours. I checked in with Rob and he says the eye of the storm should be reaching Lake Charles at about one o'clock. So two hours from now, over the next two hours, things are going to intensify in that area. So uh, we may, mm -hmm. we'll check in with him when he can, but we're reaching that point with that crew in Lake Charles where it may be time for them to get to safety and we'll check in them with them again once things um, Yeah, and improve. perhaps some of the more unsettling news too that Chris passed along, Jim Cantori right there <laughs> yes. in Lake Charles, not too far away from that live shot. So I think that's a good indication that it's time to get indoors. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what the crew will be doing there, Chris and Blake there. Now we want to head back uh, over to Vermilion Parish tonight. We know those tropical bands are making their way uh, here in Acadiana. Let's check in now with Matthew Torres joining us live in Abbeville tonight. Matthew. Marcel, just looking at these conditions, uh, so so much different. In right, just when a few we saw hours. him a little while earlier, before we saw him with the OEP director indoors, it didn't look like that. Yeah. It was a lot calmer, not as much rain, and that has been within the last couple hours or so. And mm -hmm. so there you go. Um, as the clock ticks on throughout the night, things starting to change all throughout Acadiana. And even with Matthew, uh, when he was uh, on air just a little earlier, uh, power going mm -hmm. in and out. Uh, during his live shot there when he was talking with Becky Broussard with OEP there in Vermilion Parish. Probably something that so many people are dealing with right now and perhaps people don't have generators like the courthouse does mm -hmm. so there could be outages uh, right now. We are working to get some numbers from some of the uh, utility companies around Acadiana just to see what the status is. And in prepping right for the now. storm and talking about it before it gets here, you know the power outages are coming and you know it's the wait and see game for so long when you're waiting on a hurricane to to come inland and now here we are at that point where you're starting to lose power. We've been reminding you throughout the evening where once you lose power where you can find us on our social media sites, on your streaming devices, on our website um, as you need our app. All of that's there for you if you start to lose power at this hour because it will be happening more and more throughout Acadiana as we continue over the next few hours and into the hours of the morning. And probably can hear from in the newsroom just uh, <laughs> some of the phones going off right now. Alerts going to be coming in throughout the night. Uh, we do want to remind everybody that we are uh, streaming 
uh, across all of our platforms uh, on our TV, our smart TVs. Just search KTC anywhere you stream. You can pull it up there. Uh, make sure your devices are charged right now. You want to conserve that battery power and uh, download the KTC app as well. We're, we're funneling our broadcast over there uh, to the apps and our smart TV devices and also on the radio as well mm -hmm. because power could go out. There could be issues with the signal. That's right. We're on 960 AM on radio. That's where you will find our live broadcasts throughout the night and into tomorrow morning. 960 AM is where you can keep up with our coverage as we continue to track Laura throughout the night and into the morning hours. You know, this is the point that um, we've been bracing for all across the area. And as people are getting rest, uh, hopefully people are resting while they can. This is one of those things about a nighttime storm that's so hard to deal with because it is at night and your minds and bodies need to be at ease. But yet, how well do you rest when you know that this type of situation mm -hmm. is knocking on our door? Um, affecting so many lives in this area. Yeah, hard to deal with, but also scary as well. And uh, Rob standing by. Rob, I'm wondering if we could talk about the timing you had mentioned uh, just with the tides. Not really the most opportune time ever, really, for no. a Cat 4 hurricane, but especially given the tides. Yeah, the tides will be uh, maximizing coming up at 1, 2 in the morning, coincidentally with uh, this big bulge of water that's going to be coming in with the storm surge. But as we can hear at the station, those tropical rain bands coming in and and things as promised beginning to go south with strong rain bands moving across the area. I've been hearing the winds gusting uh, roughly about 40 or 45. And uh, in fact, uh, we do have a tornado warning going right now uh, for this cell that's uh, moving out of uh, Vermilion Parish uh, and into uh, Acadia Parish. This is a new warning that just came out. We've had warnings for these other cells. So uh, let's just take a look at this one warning right here that we have going and uh, get that query going. And this tornado warning is in effect uh, till, uh, let's see, uh, 1130. And again, uh, let's go to the velocity loop and we'll take a close look. That's for that one cell. Remember I just showed you this not too long ago? Well, that's that cell that's really picked up in intensity. We have these strong rain bands moving in and they are going to get stronger and stronger just to the south here. Oops, uh, just to the south here. We just moved this a little bit. Uh, here is the dome. Here is the outer eye wall about to move inland. Uh, but as we go farther to the east, we have these strong storms now uh, moving through Kaplan. We're seeing gusty winds. We're here at KTC and I'm hearing 45 mile an hour winds. And I'm going to go over to the computer and just read off some of the wind gusts that we're starting to get in just a little bit. Uh, but we have these big tropical rain bands beginning to move in. And this is where we're going to see the gusty winds uh, as we go over the next few hours. So here's the predictive radar, uh, latest predictive radar showing those tropical rain bands moving through here. Uh, things will maximize uh, in Lafayette probably between about 1 and about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, 4 o'clock, I think we will see the, really the business end of some of these wind gusts and wind gusts up to 69 or so. I'm going to show you the predictive radar hour by hour coming up in just a bit on uh, some of the potential wind gusts. I was just putting together a couple of fresh new products here, but again, we're going to have hurricane conditions across the southwestern quarter of La Louisiana going through early tomorrow morning before things begin to calm down. So right now, here we are at 11 o'clock, and it's going to be a long six to seven hours as we move ahead. Here's the wind gust product on that high resolution rapid refresh model. Again, uh, showing the winds, 100 mile an hour winds coming up in Cameron as that eye wall moves inland, plus or minus an hour or so. Notice uh, the wind gusts as we get into Lafayette and farther to the east as well. So we're going to have those strong winds and those wind gusts more than likely uh, getting up well above 70 or 80. And this is. Uh, maybe underdone. Uh, so we were looking at one model that looked a little overdone. This one may be a little bit underdone, but you can see the 100 mile an hour winds here across portions of Cameron and Calcasieu Parish and gusts to Eunice at 83, gusts to Lafayette at uh, 62, 72 New Iberia, gusts hurricane force gusts likely everywhere in Acadiana. And I wouldn't even exclude uh, St. Mary Parish. We see gusts there going 50 and beyond. Sippermore Point uh, going to see these strong southerly winds and still hurricane force wind gusts eight o'clock in the morning. So it's going to be awfully rough weather here as the night progresses. And then we get into tomorrow midday. We start to seeing the winds die down going into the afternoon, turning out of the southwest. So a long night ahead. Anyway, you look at it. 
Once again, here's the uh, rapid refresh of the HRR model rainfall just through 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And again, all the numbers you see here don't look too terribly bad. But remember, yellow corresponds to 8. We may not be showing the exact areas that 8 inches are going to fall. The model also picking up on areas of magenta offshore. That could certainly work its way inland, so that's why we're saying 5 to 10 inches of rain, certainly a possibility in this high resolution rapid refresh model. Not the best when it comes to estimating tropical rain. So all the rains you see here, just multiply by two and that's going to be a good uh, call. And it all depends on how those rain bands come in uh, during the course of the overnight hours. Satellite imagery, an incredible looking hurricane here. It hasn't weakened a whole lot. And let's see if we have a new update, 11 o'clock position. And yes, we do. Pressure, oh gee, pressure is really really not come, come up at all. I'm still at 938, 150 mile per hour storm. So uh, this is going to be one heck of a storm. Unfortunately, it's going to be so, so devastating across southwest Louisiana. Uh, but if you notice outside, the winds are coming up outside just in Lafayette. And this is just the appetizer. The main course is hours away and the winds are going to get stronger and stronger as the night wears on in concert with the, the, what we call the pressure gradient. These lines of equal pressure as they get closer together. That's when the winds pick up and that this is where they're really packed tightly together. That's where you have having your strongest winds coming on through. So uh, these tropical rain bands really cooking, beginning to cook right now, and will continue to do so uh, as we go deeper into the nighttime hours. Of course, the storm surge, I'm going to eliminate this because we know the surge is going to be huge. Interestingly enough, this surge map is updated, and it's been going lower and lower on the surge, and for the life of me, I can't understand that. So, um, yeah, you know, we know there's going to be 10 feet of water at Sippermore Point, so we're going to... We're going to throw this product out. Not working too well. <laughs> so uh, that's the way it goes. And the graph model here, I'm not sure if this is the latest run. Uh, we'll have to look at it. I think it might be. Um, well, I'll have to check. But again, you show, we show the areas of these high winds. And this model may be on the hotter side, the higher side. Uh, but you have this donut of 100 mile an hour wind potential. And then all the way into Acadia Parish, we see the possibility of 70, 80, 90 miles. These are gusts. Uh, these are not sustained winds, but uh, the sustained winds work on the trees. The gusts knock down the trees. And of course, we're going to have more guidance coming up in just a bit. And I'm going to uh, work be over in the weather lab. I'm going to read off some of the gusts that we're seeing. They're already reaching 50 across the area, so we'll do that as well. Okay. Rob, we'll check in with you in just a bit. Let's head back out to Vermilion Parish now. Our crew there. Matthews Torres. There you go. Okay, so yeah, we are getting the uh, the blasting and the lashing from all of the wind and rain right now. We're still outside of the courthouse, just steps away where we can easily just get back in if we have to. But uh, you saw earlier with our last live shot that uh, the power went out inside the courthouse, but the backup generator kicked in. Well, just outside here by the square, you can see where some businesses, uh, actually several of them, have actually lost power as well. But here with the lights, you get a good understanding of how strong the winds are and how it's just really moving the rain back and forth as well. You know, the classic shot of the flags up here, you can just hear the uh, the flapping here and there, just here and as well as the other side of the street. Now, uh, really, it's really dark out here. If you do see any lights or any flashes of uh, headlights, from what we have seen, they're really from uh, law enforcement personnel. We have seen a few police officers actually going down here just to make sure things are going uh, smoothly that no one is around. In fact, I did see one officer pull over uh, someone potentially because of working curfew. But again, one more time, just uh, police officers are really the only ones out here at this moment as the intensity of this uh, storm really is kicking in. Of course, we're about to step inside, but uh, just as one of those reasons, make sure if you can hunker down inside. That's what we've been hearing from all of the emergency personnel throughout this evening. Uh, again, and it's just uh, within the last minute or so, that's when it really kicked in. We feel the pressure. We feel us uh, swaying uh, back and forth. And so really it's a good indication that we should probably go back inside. But once again, uh, here at least in Abbeville in, uh, in this parish, it sure is uh, it's pretty much a shower out here. Back to you.
All righty, thank you, Matthew. You know, we, he mentioned that uh, p emergency responders and police officers were the only ones out and about, and we knew they would be mm -hmm. enforcing curfews and things like that, but it is going to reach a point where not only our crews, but also those crews as well will have to be indoors, and that probably is happening sooner or later. Now we're go sooner rather than later. Um, our From Vermilion Parish up to Acadia Parish, right, Jim? Yeah, let's head to Acadia Parish now. Chris Davis standing by in rain, where we understand it's raining pretty heavy tonight. Chris. Jim, we just saw the perfect example of why it's really dangerous to be standing outside, and that's why we're not. We're actually over an underhang, overhang here at the fire station because we actually saw a power line fall to the ground off to the side, cutting power. If you actually look up at the uh, light pole over to the side here, you can see that the lights are out here. That happened within just the last minute, and it looks like it was a big gust of wind that took that light pole down, cutting uh, the power for our little section uh, of of here now you'll notice that around us the lights are back on but that's because there's a backup power generator here at the fire station which is why we are glad to be here at the station but you can see just sheets of rain falling and just big gusts in fact if we kind of look off into the distance you can see that light pole shimmying there just from the strong sheets of wind and rain that are falling from the sky right now um, at Jim as you uh, corrected me on Twitter it is very much raining in rain and we can definitely see that playing out here but like we said just moments ago we saw that perfect example of why it's really dangerous to be standing out in the middle of this because the wind gust can be just that strong if it can take over a light pole it can do lots of other things too as well and when that light pole fell you could actually see some sparks shoot up over some of the buildings over to the side so just a great example of how you really need to be careful it's interesting to look at and it looks like lights are starting to pop back on here I don't know if that's um, what's uh, able to make that happen but you can still see there were some lights around these houses that were uh, that were out um, and they continue to be out so just a great example of just how things can really escalate and we're certainly seeing it here in rain guys all right sure are Chris Davis reporting live there in rain and Marcel Marcel we're just getting some numbers in about power outages from some of the utility companies around Acadiana we are checking and of course these numbers are going to change there are going to be widespread outages 3600 about uh, 3600 Slimco customers without power right now and nearly 16,000 energy customers most of those outages in Calcasieu Parish yeah about 13,000 of those 16 almost 16 in Calcasieu and Cameron parishes according to energy we're getting in touch with Clico to get their numbers but as you mentioned mm -hmm. um, ever changing those numbers are going to change so it's much it's just going to keep happening we've hour. seen it happen on live television tonight there right. in Abbeville where uh, Matthew Torres was doing his live shot and uh, the generators kicked in pretty quick though they so. did they absolutely did Rob is up and out of his yeah. chair and ready to go with new information go for us go ahead Rob yeah I want to just read off uh, some of the uh, observations you can take the radar full here just uh, to show you where those heavy rain bands are coming in uh, but the winds really coming up well I'm, I'm hearing gusts here at the station at about 45 and I'm going to go through uh, some of the observing sites uh, uh, salt point that's down by the coast uh, that's uh, right about let me get my cursor here salt point over here is about 49 uh, we got Patterson coming in at 33 these are not necessarily in any order 38 at Acadiana Regional but gusts in the last hour to 45 uh, so the winds are coming up gust to 30 this is for Lafayette Regional Airport but we've had higher gusts here at the station those winds will be picking up at the Lafayette Airport we'll see it in the latest ob. in fact let me call a five minute observation up uh, for Lafayette uh, so we can get to that um, gust to 31 nah, no big change there 25 gusts at Opelousas at this hour uh, down and rain. I got a gust to 19, but that uh, data looks a little suspect to me. Uh, gust of 47. This would be at uh, where is this uh, Southland Field? Uh, that's over by Lake Charles. Lake Charles. Wow, gust to 64 in the Lake Charles area. So we are getting close to hurricane force uh, winds in the Lake Charles area. So uh, really picking up uh, Sabine. Um, uh, this is the Sabine, Louisiana, uh, right along the coast. They're reporting 59 at this hour. Calcasieu, 69 at 1048. 
So wins coming up. Lacassine, I got 53. Uh, so these numbers really coming up 51. Uh, so these numbers look more in line with the graph model. So I'm going to go show you that coming up in just a bit and give you a full radar update. I got 47 at the Freshwater Canal. Oh, Freshwater Canal locks will just close that page. They stopped reporting at 7, 12 p.m. So they're done. Uh, good luck to them. Uh, 11, 15 p.m. We have Abbeville coming in at 24. Uh, the anemometer doesn't look too good to me there. Uh, and uh, let's see if I have any more here that I could show you. That offshore uh, buoy in the Gulf of Mexico reporting 65 knots, which is uh, right at uh, 75 miles an hour. So hurricane force winds, that's out here in the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, got a lot going on. And as promised, conditions beginning to tear do deteriorate quite quickly and I'm going to work my way over to the wall because we got a suite of new uh, forecast model data as well but uh, there you see the eye of Laura moving inland as we speak, uh, looking quite intense. A lot of lightning around that eye wall, and we'll probably see more lightning as it begins to interact with uh, Cameron Parish. And uh, you see these big tropical rain bands. These are the ones that are producing probably 50 to 60 mile an hour wind gusts across the area. So uh, it's go time. Here we go, uh, just south of Cameron. Uh, again, uh, the worst winds coming in. If anybody, if anybody uh, you know, I pray for you if you're at the courthouse down in Cameron writing this out. Uh, it's going to be coming uh, down incredibly already. I'm sure the storm surge is coming up here and uh, probably a massive surge at that. And we'll take a look at the tides coming up in our main cast, uh, next cast. Here we have, uh, we have uh, uh, tornado warnings going right now uh, across portions of uh, uh, Vermilion and Acadia Parish. Uh, and again, we look at the velocities here. And again, we can see that couplet that is just south of Crowley uh, heading uh, toward the Esterwood area. So you're going to see the winds picking up. It may not necessarily be a tornado, but we're going to see these warnings and these couplets involved in some of these tropical squalls are really going to be producing some intense, uh, intense winds and uh, rapid changing of the winds. I call them gust nados. They're not really traditional tornadoes, but they can act like tornadoes, uh, but uh, they are they are large swirls within uh, the, uh, uh, the the sweeps that we're seeing right now. And again, if we do some tracking right here, uh, we're probably seeing. Yeah, that was the rotation of the storm. And this is uh, what we're seeing across the area. These uh, these rotate. You see one picking up on it here on the eye. Well, uh, maybe uh, an isolated tornado very close to the Doppler radar in Lake Charles. So uh, we'll watch to see if they issue a warning on that. And then we move it out across the rest of Acadiana and we'll open it up uh, for all of Acadiana and track some of these storms here uh, with that storm tracker. And again, you can see things moving along uh, across the region. Again, we'll throw on the tracking right now and see what the Doppler is seeing uh, with respect to spin. We got one that's down in uh, Chafalaya Bay, this one that we have the tornado warning on. So that's going to continue through the overnight hours uh, with these very intense rain bands that are moving on through. And I would be venturing to guess that we're seeing uh, gusts in the 70 mile an hour range right by Abbeville right here. Uh, we can come in even a little bit closer here and uh, 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 move out and again and show you some of those other rain bands that are moving on through and then we'll come in a little bit and show you the predictive radar and again we were showing you this uh, this I think is doing a pretty good job of uh, what we're seeing with respect to uh, landfall maybe an hour or so behind because uh, we have the center of the from over a camera at 2 a.m. I think it's going to be closer to maybe about 12:30 or 1. Uh, we'll see how it goes. 11:30, yeah, about 12:30. Not may not be a bad call. And these tropical rain bands just pounding through the area during the course of the overnight hours uh, and those gusty winds. So you'll get those tropical squalls. The winds will kick up 60, 70, 80 miles an hour perhaps, and then you get a bit of a break. And then another squall moves in. And look at this one right here. This one's looking awfully mean. Uh, this is not. Uh, this is not. Uh, maybe exactly what's going to happen, but when we see things that look like this on radar and see the enhancement that we do, uh, it's going to be awfully rough. So we showed you this appears to be underdoing it a little bit. I think we're going to see more than 55 mile an hour winds in Lafayette uh, per se, but approaching hurricane forces, we get into the western parishes. So. 
We'll go over, take a look at the high resolution rapid refresh model rainfall. Uh, again, we're not sure that we're going to see levels this low because these tropical rains put down this much rain in about an hour's time. And we know we're going to see, everybody's going to see three or four of these rain bands overnight tonight. So that five to 10 inch rainfall uh, still looks pretty good to me. And again, uh, look at this, boy, oh boy. You know, you just, you know, it's, it's hard to look at that. It really is, uh, you know, a category four, high end category four storm, just shy of category five. Now, mind you, when Michael made landfall, it was considered a category four, but, uh, but roughly a year later after careful analysis, it was upgraded to a five. This one pretty close to a five. It may ultimately be classified as a five. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, I don't think we've ever had a five on record going back to the 1800s making landfall uh, in California. Cameron Power, so certainly one of the higher end events uh, going on. So uh, uh, we got another tornado warning coming in. We'll get to that in just a bit. But here's the graph model. We uh, and that's why I have this plot up right here. It just says it just sent it to my Twitter account. So you check out my Twitter account, and you'll see the latest tornado warning. So we got you covered in every venue on your phone and everywhere else. So uh, again, this looks very accurate to me on uh, those intense rainfalls. Uh, notice that uh, the wind gusts are higher on this model. And we'll do that hour by hour look as well. Uh, but uh, moving northward, it looks like this is pretty close. This is somewhere in between the high resolution rapid refresh, which is a little bit further back to the west, and this one a little bit farther to the east. But it does show very intense uh, squalls uh, continuing across the region. And then uh, the threat of these lingering rain bands and and this again is an experimental model so we're going to see how well this verifies but so far over the last two days it's verified very well i got really excited when i saw this on sunday and we've been going with it uh yesterday and today and showing these lingering tropical rain bands that will exacerbate any flooding issues that we're going to have uh coming up and then let's progress into friday it looks like we're in pretty good shape, but a drier air and a disturbance coming in is going to ignite the lingering tropical moisture. And this is what we see in the wake of these hurricanes. We have a super heavy moisture laden atmosphere where dew points are in the upper 70s to near 80. It's absolutely disgusting on the humidity. All the windows are sweating. That's what you get with a tropical storm or hurricane. And we're going to have this lingering moisture and the threat of more heavy rainfall in the region through Friday afternoon and probably pretty good rain chances for Saturday and Sunday. So here's the graph model and wow, because hopefully this is not going to verify, uh, but this has a larger swath of 100 mile an hour winds. And I, you know, I can't discard these kind of winds either. This model just coming in uh, showing your gusts here and I'll take this nice and slow. So here you got the eye going through Cameron uh, between Cameron and Hackberry at 2 a.m. Um, maybe a little bit slow, but this is going to give you an idea on what winds to expect. And with an hour or two of uh, what we're showing you here, uh, there could be gusts as high as 125, uh, 127 Lake Charles, Bell City, Grand Chenier. I don't doubt uh, you might see those kind of winds. Wind gusts are over 100 in Lake Arthur, Jennings 90, Crowley 75, Gaydon 88. Uh, we see some 70s wherever those tropical rain bands are showing up. You're going to see 70s and 80s. Uh, and again, uh, the worst of the winds with this system over southwest Louisiana. And again, these numbers may be a little bit too high, but this is what I would plan for. Uh, you know, this is a serious situation and you don't want to underestimate and, and you never ever underestimate a hurricane by of this intensity and the damage it can do. And I'm looking at these numbers and, and it's kind of surrealistic to me and, and it looks like it's, oh, that's not going to happen. But we have a 150 mile an hour storm offshore. So uh, we're going to see sustained winds that are going to be lower than this. But these are the gusts that we're going to likely see in spots. Not everybody's going to see the gusts that we're showing you here, uh, but 70, 80 mile an hour winds possible for just about anywhere those tropical rain bands manifest and notice Allen Northwestern Evangeline Parish we're showing 80 90 mile an hour winds at Eunice uh, prior to daybreak and then things will begin to calm down at least for Acadiana's part but uh, we get into Senla this could be just as bad of a storm up toward Alexandria as it might be in Jeff Davis Parish and as we indicated the worst parishes that are going to get hit Acadia on west or wherever we have the hurricane warnings you expect hurricane winds that's the way it works a hurricane warning means 
expect hurricane conditions, and that means sustained winds, sustained winds of 75, and then your gust to uh, 100 or so. So uh, some very intense weather going on here. And uh, again, as uh, we get deeper into tomorrow afternoon, things will calm down, and it really calms down nicely uh, by this time tomorrow night or shortly thereafter. Okay, rainfall, this is the graph model. This looks pretty good to me. I like this rainfall output better because, well, it, not because it shows more. It's not like I'm a wish caster. I think it's more accurately depicting this tropical moisture and models are notorious for underestimating rainfall potential in tropical systems. So you can pick out your location. You know, you know, we'll say Lafayette 6.85. We'll pick out Jennings, uh, but there are gonna be areas, notice that pink, that corresponds to 10 inches of rain. 10 inches of rain, some portions of uh, perhaps Beauregard into western portions of Calcasieu. You get into that cream color, we're pushing 15 inches of rain. And mind you, over the years, I started out with a eight inch uh, rain key, then I expanded it to 15 inches, and then over the years, 20 inches. Why? Well, because now we have more accurate models and we can model this better. Uh, but over the last several years, I've actually had to put these 40 and 50 uh, inch uh, projections uh, for storm such as Harvey for storms such as the 2016 flood. Now, I don't think we're going to see the 2016 flood, but we're going to have flooding. And all the water that goes to the Vermilion is that going to go absolutely nowhere because of that storm surge that's coming up along the coast. If you weren't with us on the discussions earlier, we're going to have strong southerly winds, and that's going to keep any water from draining on out. So we're going to have a lot of standing water going into the weekend before we have a chance to dry out. Then we add the rains going into Friday. So uh, then that's when we're going to see some of the areas pushing 10, 12, 14 inches of rain, and that is certainly a possibility. So everything that we've been talking about, that storm surge, the rainfall, nothing has changed. 40 to 60 mile an hour winds sustained, gusts 75 to 90 anywhere in Acadiana. That applies no matter if you're in Franklin or if you're in Crowley, uh, but you get west of Lafayette and northwest of Lafayette and southwest of Lafayette. You take Lafayette, draw a line on the map and just go west. All that entire area is going to see 100 to 130 mile an hour wind gusts and that is devastating uh, for many, many areas and obviously isolated tornadoes. We're going to have those, but uh, just as many tornadoes, we're going to have wind gusts in those tropical rain bands that are going to be quite intense. So let me go through the radar one more time, bring you up to speed. Uh, where we have this storm just about making landfall right along the Cameron Coast. Notice that outer rain. Boy, it's, uh, you know, I, I'd like to see what this looks like, but I would never really want to go there because I know what it looks like, and it's horrific. Uh, new tornado warning. Is this a new tornado warning, Bradley? Is this just come out? Throw up max two. Throw up max two. Velocities here. Uh, we do have tornado warnings now extending not only into um, Vermilion Parish, but also into Acadia Parish as well. And actually, Rob, I was just checking some wind gusts around the Kaplan area here. Uh, they were gusting to around 40 miles per hour or so, but if you look just off uh, to the east here, uh, probably gusting to probably 50, 55 miles per hour. And then uh, just off to the south and west of the Crowley area, mm -hmm. um, again, another... That's right by Esterwood. Yep, yeah, right by Esterwood, a pretty healthy uh, wind event going on right here as well and then also close to the Jennings area the radar picking up on some heavier wind gusts as well so uh, I wouldn't you know rule out the possibility of probably gusting to moderate tropical storm force here um, just now nearing the I-10 corridor and these are generally again heading more inland and we can expect this here as we head to the next couple of hours but uh, we'll continue to watch this Lafayette as of this point um, gusting to around 30 to 35, but uh, again, the heaviest of the rainfall, the squally weather, and the very high wind gusts gradually moving off to the north here into our inland parish over the next couple of hours or so. But yes, that tornado warning, Rob, has just been extended. Let me see if I can move over here just a little bit into Jeff Davis Parish now extends all the way uh, from Vermilion Parish into Acadia Parish, kind of where these, these these uh, green colorings here on the scale kind of line up. You can see that it's kind of where the tornado warning is extending at this point. So uh, just keep that in mind. Weather is starting to go downhill here. And um, let's see if we can find anything else on the velocity products right now. It doesn't look like it. But uh, as of this point, that's what we're dealing with 
for our tornado warning. So um, now's the time again to hunker down if you're watching. Not the time to be outside trying to see what's going on. You'll have flying debris, things like that starting to pick up. And this is only going to go downhill as the storm continues to push, push inland here uh, towards Cameron Parish uh, in the next probably less than two hours now, hour and a half or so. So um, all this squally weather gradually heading northward and into our inland parishes. So if it's looking okay in your area right now, maybe Ville Platte, Opelousas, even here in Lafayette, um, we kind of hear the weather going down here at the going downhill here at the station. But uh, again, all of this gradually moving inland and going to get worse here over the next several hours. Rob. All right. Well, yeah, I just got a report actually um, National Weather Service confirming a uh, spotter reported a rain wrap tornado near Bell City earlier. Uh, that is three miles south southwest of Lake Arthur. That was for that one cell that wound up going out into the marsh. So um, certainly we're going to see a lot of that. And by the way, if you haven't been introduced to Bradley Benoit, he's our new newest meteorologist that uh, uh, just recently graduated from uh, ULM. He's a war hawk, but we won't hold that against him. Uh, he's got a bachelor of science degree in meteorology and he's from uh, beautiful Thibodeau, Louisiana down here. What is that? Well, that's Lafouche Parish, correct? Lafouche Parish. Yeah, okay, Lafouche Parish is representing in the house. And he has, uh, what, what storm, by the way, got you, did you, was there a particular hurricane that got you interested in weather? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, we had a couple of storms where the eye wall moved right over Thibodeau, two of which, uh, Gustav and Isaac both moved right over the Thibodeau area as far as the eye wall was concerned. So that was a pretty serious situation. Right. And yeah, obviously interest me in weather and more particularly tropical weather as well. So always interested in hurricanes. And you know, we said this earlier, this is something that we enjoy to look at on satellite imagery, but it's one of our worst fears here to see it move inland, you know, into our coastal parishes here. Right. Um, and so nothing you really want to see catastrophic event, but um, something that we're just continuing to track here. All right. Well, I think, uh, Bradley, we do have a new tornado warning that may have just come in. Let me just back this up right here. Uh, let me take a look at the warnings. I just uh, kind of heard I got to click on my watch. Oh, this is a flash flood warning. Uh, let's see what we got going here. But uh, uh, let me look at this. Uh, but that's because we've had the rain going already. And that's why we don't underestimate the rainfall. So National Weather Service coming out with a flash flood warning. Evangeline, St. Landry, Iberia, Lafayette, West Central St. Martin, uh, Northwestern St. Mary, Acadia. You see it here on the, on the green showing up. Okay, Doppler radar indicating that uh, uh, rainfall is uh, starting to about two to three inches has fallen. That's easy to figure so far. Additional amounts of three to five in the next few hours till 2.45 in the morning. So the next three hours or so, uh, there we have that flood warning. So uh, be wary of rising water around your home. And obviously this is no time to go venture out uh, into uh, the streets because we're going to see these very heavy rain bands moving in, flooding, rainfall likely. And we'll just uh, hope that uh, we don't uh, get too much in the way of heavy duty rainfall. But the, the rain that we have going right now is going to be on and off for the next, the next six hours. So I know there's going to be many low lying areas that are going to be prone to the flood threat. So here we have our major hurricane, the eye wall now edging right onto uh, uh, shore. So I can say pretty safely that I was a gust about 60, 65 here at the station. I can hear that going on at, at Iowa making landfall. And again, uh, here we have, this is why the winds are really kicking up at KETC. This is a one cell right here uh, producing pretty strong winds. And, you know, it's kind of nice to try to uh, verify uh, what we're seeing. And it, nah, it doesn't look like much going on there at all. It just looks like uh, uh, we have uh, more of a, looks like a tornado uh, threat here in Northwestern Vermilion Parish. Just take a quick query. Uh, I will say uh, right here, there's a new tornado warning that just came in and uh, I don't know if we'll get that or not. Oh, I we'll have to do this first. Make sure I hit the little question mark here and then go ahead and do this and getting 69 mile an hour wind. So that actually is driving uh, with what I'm hearing at the station. I kind of can hear, I know how the building sounds in a certain uh, wind velocity. So uh, let's bring us home here. 
And let's take a look at the warnings uh, because we uh, are seeing a new warning that came in and that looks like an oh, they're just reigniting and that's for that one cell that I was showing you on the velocity. Uh, Bradley, if you can go work that velocity on this coupler right here and maybe this one right here. So we got a couple of tornadoes going. Just let me know when you're ready for that and we'll uh, take care of the other business of the storm as it's going to be coming on in. Uh, but uh, from here on out, it's going to be more radar and we're watching these rain bands pushing on through. But again, uh, what we were talking about earlier, I, this, uh, we're going to take this out of the show because I don't think uh, this model is doing a particularly good job on the uh, rainfall nor on uh, the uh, storm itself. But again, we can see that eye wall now edging into Cameron Parish. So uh, um, uh, it's before midnight. We can say we've had two uh, major hurricane hits here in Louisiana on August 26th, one being Hurricane Andrew in 1992. And now we have Hurricane Laura here in 2020. And uh, unfortunately, uh, look at this. Oh, this is horrible. Uh, you see how we have this enhancement, this cold cloud top enhancement right at the end of the loop. Uh, that is damaging winds. That is rainfall rates in the four, five inch range per hour and the winds that are probably just absolutely horrendous at this time. Uh, so again, this is going to be slowly working its way through the area as we head through the overnight hours, and we're going to continue to see these uh, storms uh, producing uh, wind gusts. Uh, and I think this is a very representative forecast, but notice the models, oh my goodness, the model is about an hour behind. So uh, 2 o'clock, well, let's say 1 a.m., Gusts to 77 in Lafayette, and I think we're going to buy into these numbers here. So it's going to be a long night ahead, and we'll be watching those observations coming up uh, throughout the nighttime hours. And Marcel, I think you got something to go, so we'll pause and we'll shoot it over to you, and we'll be back on shortly. All righty, thank you, Rob. Well, standing by on the phone with us right now is Mary Laurent with Slimco. One of the things we've been talking about all night is power outages, and we have reached that point. Mary, thank you so much for joining us. What can you tell us about outages right now for Slimco? and in what areas predominantly? I have uh, just checked that and we're right at 8,500. <clears throat> in fact, exactly right at 8,500 right now. And um, they are throughout our system. It appears that uh, Rob's talking about a couple of the, the areas in, in Vermilion Parish where it looks like they might have some tornadic activity. We are showing uh, significant outages in that area, uh, kind of between Lafayette, Kaplan, and Abbeville, somewhere in that triangle there. But they are spread throughout the system. Uh, obviously more to the south where the where the storm is coming in first mm -hmm. uh, but um, the the winds are now at a speed that our men have come back in out of the field they worked up to about 35 miles an hour and they're all back in now and they're going to stay um, secure and and, and uh, at home or at the office until the speeds go back down to about 30 35 miles an hour when they'll move out again so as people are coming out going off now we certainly want them to call we certainly want them to report the outages but they need to know that the men are going to be staying in now until the the, the winds die back down enough to a safe speed well, 8,500 customers across your system without power at this hour. For people who are listening to us via, via a device or over radio at this point, what is your advice to them if they are at home and without power at this point? Well, the first thing is, is to try and be patient. We know it's going to get pretty warm pretty quick. Uh, and if it's not going to be too warm tonight, we do know that it's going to get warm really quick tomorrow when the sun comes out. Uh, so they're going to be firing up their generators. And one of the main things they need to do is make sure that they practice good generator safety. Uh, we need to make sure that they don't try to uh, hook up their whole house to their standby generators unless it's done with a double throw switch. Because what happens if, if, the, if they do that without that switch, the um, generator actually sends power back up the line and it can electrocute the workers. So that's, that's our first concern because we've got to keep our workers safe. And then the second thing is that we recommend strongly that people do not try to protect their generators from theft by putting them either in a closed garage or even in a house um, because that brings up uh, carbon monoxide, which is, which is a whole other danger. Well, that's very, very vital information as people are losing power and will be firing up those generators, keeping your workers safe and keeping themselves safe as well from carbon monoxide issues. Thank you so much, Mary. 8,500 customers in the Simclo system at this point without power. Crews are in for the night. They have gone in for the night and will be back out in the fields restoring power when winds get back down to 35 miles an hour or so. Mary, we'll be checking in with you um, throughout the night tonight and into tomorrow. Thank you for this information and we'll talk to you soon. Soon. Take care.
You too. Thanks. Utility crews, Marcel, are going to have quite, quite a task over the next few days. They indeed will. You know, just hearing that our graphic showed 5,000 customers. That was that last check with Slimco. Mary just updating us as she got new information and talking about what Rob was saying about tornadic activity. And she's saying, yes, we're seeing that um, mm -hmm. as well and where our power outages are along their outage maps there. So 8,500 Slimco customers, more customers will probably be losing power as we continue throughout the evening. Sure well, just in the past half hour here at the KTC studios, we're in Lafayette. We can hear the wind picking up. We can hear the rain picking up. Let's get a check of the current conditions outside. Andrew Clay wearing his news reporter hat for <laughs> us tonight. Uh, he's out back behind the studio here. Andrew, how is it? Thanks, guys. We've really been focusing a lot tonight on our coverage in our southern coastal parishes and our western parishes, and that's for very good reason. But as Laura hits land, it, we are really feeling the effects here in Lafayette. I don't know if you can see much behind me, but here, since I've been standing outside for about the last 30 minutes, the winds have really picked up. Uh, this is actually as low as it's been here for the last couple of minutes. I've been conferring with Rob with gusts in the 40 mile an hour range. It's raining very heavily here at the KATC studio. Now, if you live in Lafayette and you can't tell how it's raining here, just look out your window. I'm sure you can see at your home. Uh, but of course, the bands can be very hit or miss. And right now here at the KATC studio, it's very much hit. Uh, it's raining cats and dogs, as my kids would say. And the wind gusts are just blowing. We've had a, a gauge out here trying to monitor it. But, you know, Rob and talking with him, you know, saying about 40 mile an hour winds right now here at the studio. and, and you can really hear it. I feel like I'm yelling right now, and that's because we've got a tin roof above us, and we're going to be fortunate to be protected by this tin roof so we can do these live shots and not be too much in the elements. But it's very hard to hear over the tin roof as the, ro the rain just continues to pour here in Lafayette again. If you look out there, you can see the water just blowing across the parking lot. The rains are just gusting and gusting. The wind is really coming down again. We're seeing winds roughly around 40 miles per hour as the rain keeps coming down here in Lafayette. Again, if you don't get a good view of what we're trying to show you here because it's dark, or we just don't have lights that can show all the rain, you should be able to see it if you just look outside real quick because it is really picked up here in Lafayette. And the more northern parishes are gonna start to see this rain, start to see these rain bands as Laura continues to come on to land. Uh, I understanding that she has officially hit land here in uh, Louisiana, there near Lake Charles. So here in Lafayette, we're feeling the winds. We're feeling the rains. Just watch the rain go back and forth. As I said, Rob telling me about 40 miles per hour here in Lafayette. It's important to remember, yes, we have been with our southern parishes, our coastal parishes, a lot of the night. That is where the storm surge is most dangerous. But if you're in Lafayette and you're in other places, you're not out of the woods. Your know, trees and, and wind damage is still very possible. And some places are going to see heavy, heavy amounts of rain. You know, I've seen the projections Rob uh, has shown for Lafayette. And I was just talking to Bradley here just a minute ago. I feel like we've seen an inch or two since I've been standing here. The rain just continues to come down. So it's important to remember that just because you're in Lafayette and the storm isn't directly impacting the area with the eye doesn't mean you're completely out of the woods. It's important to stay safe throughout the next evening, really throughout the next 24 hours. Live here at the KTC studio, Andrew Clay. All righty, thank you, Andrew. Well, happening now, a staging area is being set up in Lafayette for any potential evacuees. And Amon Boyd joins us now, continuing our team coverage in Lafayette with those crews setting up over at Lafayette Middle School. Amon. Yeah, that's right. Lafayette Middle School is being transformed into a lily pad for evacuees who don't have anywhere to go tonight. Now, specifically, they're only going to have a 50 people here. Second Harvest is actually providing all of the snacks and the water that you see here. Pillows and blankets will also be provided for those as well who are in need tonight. Now, we do want to clarify that this is not open to the public and those individuals who are found are unable to evacuate. They have a safe space in order to ride out the storm tonight. When people arrive, they'll check for any weapons or lighters or any type of thing like that because, of course, it is a school facility. Everyone is safe. It's whoever needs to evacuate um, and who is brought here by search and rescue. So it's really not just like a walk up 
um, space. It really needs to be referred to through, through search and rescue, but it's whoever's not able to stay in the home because it's not safe. And again, we just want to reiterate that this is just a temporary shelter for those who are staying here tonight. They will be transferred to other locations tomorrow. In Lafayette, Mon Boy, KTC TV3. That's an important note there that that space is for search and rescue mm -hmm. when people have to get people out. It's not a place where you just, if you feel you need to leave, you go and show up at the door. It's for search and rescue, and those people will stay there for a time and then be moved to somewhere else. Um, that's just a staging area for search and rescue evacuations that happen. And you have to imagine that Lafayette's probably in a better position than most mm -hmm. other places in the state. It's probably closest to the uh, more harder hit areas from the hurricane over toward Lake Charles and western portions of Acadiana. So an important resource that uh, those crews can uh, have at their disposal there over at Lafayette Middle School. Well, let's head out what is expected to be the epicenter of this storm out to Lake Charles. Our Chris Welty standing by live. Chris, things changing there by the minute. Hey, Jim Marcel, you're right. Marcel, I heard you say things are changing by the minute and they really are uh, over the past 30 minutes or so the winds and rains have really picked up. This is going to be our last live shot out here. I'm calling it. We're going to be going back to hunker down inside the hotel in a minute, but uh, we've seen some just a lot of wind, the rain picking up and it was sort of crazy. We saw some uh, intense lightning and it was like the sky lit up in like a blue green type color. Um, and as we're sitting out here underneath the awning of the hotel, uh, our photojournalist Blake Blanchard, he asked me, he said, Chris, do you hear like an ambulance in the background? And I said, no, Blake, that's actually the winds just howling. That's just how intense the situation is now here in the Lake Charles area. And Blake, if we can, I want to show you this as well. So we've been watching uh, as we're underneath the awning of the hotel uh, parking lot. Uh, we've seen these big light pendants swinging back and forth, just swinging back and forth. And uh, they do have some really strong suspension cables. And of course, everyone hopes that those hold and they stay in place where they belong. Uh, but the situation is definitely getting intense here in Lake Charles. And uh, as we said, this is our last live shot that we're going to do outside for now. As the storm does push inward here in Lake Charles, we want to be safe. Uh, as we mentioned through previous live shots, our hotel, they have been giving warnings about every 30 minutes saying stay away from the windows to close the curtains. Uh, they're afraid that the windows could potentially bust, but we were talking to some of the hotel security earlier this evening, and they said that the hotel windows should be able to sustain about 200 mile an hour winds. So that is some slightly good news, and we're hoping that those uh, windows do hold. And uh, the hotel, they also are asking us to fill the tubs with water. They say that that will help as well in case um, you need something to drink later or even after the storm. If there's any type of plumbing issues, you'll be able to flush the toilet uh, following the storm. So um, some very good advice that we're getting from the hotel staff here in Lake Charles. But uh, once again, this situation is rapidly in changing here in Lake Charles. And fortunately, a lot of people, they did heed the warnings and leave. But earlier we did talk to one man who's just a few blocks away from the lake and the Civic Center area. And he was doing those last minute preparations, boarding up his home. But uh, whenever I asked him, I said, are you worried about the storm surge? Are you worried about the intensity of this storm? Uh, because this storm is so close to that category five status. He told me, look, I'm from South Louisiana. I'm used to it. I can't leave my mama. I can't leave my family. Uh, his family lives pretty much all on the same street and his mom lives just a block or two over. But uh, whenever I asked him about the storm surge, he told me that his neighborhood could see about nine feet of water. And he did tell me that he's prepared. He has an ax in his attic and he has a saw ready to go in case he needs to cut through his roof to be rescued. But once again, a very intense situation here in Lake Charles. And if we can, we'll just show you one more time. We'll zoom in for you and you can see in the light uh, just how that wind and rain is just starting to whip and it's starting to come from all directions now, uh, the wind and rain. So uh, for now, though, 
this is the situation here in Lake Charles. We'll bring you the very latest as this storm and the situation continues to unfold live in Lake Charles. Chris Welty, KTC TV3. Yeah, yeah, Lake Charles uh, just saw a gust to uh, 74 miles an hour, so that's hurricane force winds in the Lake Charles area now reaching Lake Charles and notice uh, that's just with the outer rain bands. That's the not the main uh, main uh, attraction that's coming in. This is the one that's going to have the 100 plus mile an hour winds uh, and we're talking 150 mile per hour sustained wind storm. Uh, so uh, the winds are going to be uh, gusting uh, probably up to 120 125 in the Lake Charles area. So uh, we're thinking about them. A uh, quick look at some of the other OBS around the area. Lafayette reporting uh, 38 gusts. Let me uh, just pull down the five minute OB. Uh, 38 gusts so far, uh, picking up a little bit. Uh, Opelousas 30. Uh, we have a gust to 56 over at Southland Field. Uh, that's by the Lake Charles area. Uh, gust to uh, 71. Uh, that is the most recent one for the Lake Charles Airport. Sabine, uh, Sabine Pass area gusts to 73. That's one short of a hurricane. Uh, Calcasieu uh, uh, Pass is showing a gust to 89 miles an hour. Uh, current gust at 88. It was up to 89. So here come the winds. Lacassine gust to 57, gust to 51 at 930 at Pecan Island, but that's it for Pecan Island. We're not going to get any more OBS from Pecan Island because uh, we haven't gotten anything else from there. Abbeville suspect data. Patterson gust 33 at this hour. Acadiana Regional gust to 49. Let me see if there's anything uh, uh, higher than that. No, 49 is the highest gust so far, uh, but here come 50, 60 mile an hour winds across the area, and I do believe we do have a report coming in in from Scott Brazza, so I'm going to throw over to him at this point. Now it's time for science class with a little drama thrown in. This is what rain aided wind or wind aided rain sounds like. That's rain on top of our one of our tin roofs out here. Scott Brazza uh, reporting for you. I wasn't supposed to come in until 2 a.m., but I figured with the storm coming in, it was better to come in earlier than later and try to catch a, a few winks. Um, I live off of, uh, well, in the Broadmoor subdivision off of Johnson and Ambassador, and as I'm leaving about 30 minutes ago, it's a mild sprinkle, a mild breeze in a very heavily wooded area. Anybody that knows that area, a lot of oak trees and stuff like that out there. Coming up down Johnson, down Ambassador, there's a couple vehicles the uh, flag in front of Sam's Club on Ambassador, you know, just kind of floating in there, but I'm thinking probably what a lot of you guys are thinking, where is it, where is it? And of course, sure enough, it's uh, as Rob and as Bradley have said, how quickly this thing can turn, because the minute I turned on a, a, a Eras Lander Road about 15 minutes ago, that's when you started getting all that side rain. You know, when you're, uh, oh, I'm running through campus, I'm trying to go teach my class at UL, and no matter where you put your umbrella, you can't shield the rain. Well, then it started to hit you about thigh high, and of course you get soaked from, from that point down. And now we've really started to see it ramp up in the last 10, 15 minutes or so. So uh, the storm is here, as we've been told, it's certainly made landfall, and certainly gonna keep us on us. We wish all of you guys good, good thoughts, but now it's starting to come, the wind is starting to give it some oof, and uh, batten down the hatches and everybody stay safe. Scott Brasda with you. I'll be on and off with Andrew uh, throughout the morning. Good thoughts to you guys. Scott Brasda, back to you guys in the studio. Well, Jim, we have officially made it to Thursday. It is now a new day there as we is. cross yeah, the Thursday. 12 o'clock hour. Just after midnight, we are getting closer to Hurricane Laura's landfall again, like Charles expected uh, to really be the epicenter of this storm. But western parts of Acadiana are going to be especially hard hit. Let's head out live now to Acadia Parish. Chris Davis out there live, continuing our team coverage. Chris, what are you seeing? You know, Jim, it's one thing to see the rain. It's one thing to feel the rain. We are hearing the rain and the wind just, it is howling out here. I also want to just let you know, in the last 45 minutes that we've been out here, we have had the power go out at least three different times. It's flickered on, it's flickered off, it's flickered on. We're really blessed to be at the uh, fire hall here where we don't have to worry about power being off indefinitely because they have a backup generator. But 
of course, so many people aren't so lucky. So we've got some light set up here. Hopefully we'll be able to see, to show you just how powerful this rain is, just how powerful this uh, wind is, and I'm sorry, I, I'm pausing because we're getting an emergency alert for our area for a tornado warning in this area as well. We've also heard some uh, alerts about flood uh, warnings in the area as well, uh, and uh, on top of the hurricane. So it's just a lot of activity out here, obviously, all at once. You can see just rain continuing to pour down in sheets. You can see some of these power lines just kind of wiggling in the wind. It's hard to see because so many of the, uh, of the, of the uh, utility lights are off in our area because of the power outage, but you can see kind of off in the distance just how heavy this rain is coming in right now, and it's swirling in multiple directions. So thankfully, we are underneath a roof overhang here at the fire station, so we're not just out in the midst of the elements because it really, you can see how dangerous it would be for someone to have to be out in this directly. So we are blessed to be in this specific situation. In the meantime, we're going to try to continue to bring you these pictures just from a safe distance and we'll send it back to you. Thank you so much, Chris. You know, we are want to make sure that as power continues to go out throughout Acadiana, you know where you can find us on your streaming devices, Apple TV, Roku, Fire Stick, all of those. We're streaming on Facebook and KTC.com. Also on radio, 960 AM is what you tune into to hear our live broadcast throughout the night and into tomorrow should you lose power. That's 960 AM. You can hear the KTC broadcast as they are happening overnight and into tomorrow as you are losing power in Acadiana. We've been getting some power outage updates so we know that widespread power outages are happening at this point. Yeah, just in hearing from uh, Chris Davis out there in rain, he said it's one thing to see the rain, it's another to feel it. We could hear it on the rooftop here at KETC, but just seeing our crews out there, it just it seems like it's raining so very hard and that wind out there is really starting to pick up. That is going to have a big impact on those power lines. Uh, LUS is warning people to just stay away from them. Those loose or dangling lines we heard Chris Davis talking about could still have electricity running through them. So you should not under any circumstances try to pick them up, drive over them, touch them in any way. Your best bet is just to report any downed power lines you see. If you are within Lafayette under LUS, call 291-5700 to report Report any downed power lines. Well, and another thing, you know, generator usage is increasing right now, and there's some safety tips. But before we tell you about that, Rob's back in the weather lab. There's some new information coming in, so we want to get you that mm -hmm. up to date information well, as it's happening, Rob. Just while we're talking about power outages, let's take the Doppler computer, uh, the old Doppler computer, and uh, just want to show you uh, uh, some of the power outages that we're starting to see in Lafayette. You can see once you get into the areas of uh, red here, you're talking about 60%, and uh, those that are being tracked in uh, in Cameron Parish, uh, more than half of Cameron Parish is out right now. Uh, you get into Calcasieu, you see the numbers going up, and this is courtesy of poweroutage.us, uh, so it kind of shows you uh, who's out of power, even Point Coupee Power seeing power outages, and that was uh, from uh, thunderstorm activity earlier. So let's go back to the graphics and take a look at uh, what we have. We are starting to see uh, hurricane force wind gusts uh, uh, being achieved in Lake Charles. Uh, and more than likely in some of these rain bands that are moving into Jeff Davis Parish. Unfortunately, we don't get observational data uh, from these areas, but nonetheless, uh, we're likely seeing some very intense winds here uh, from Vermilion Parish on northward uh, going into the Lake Charles area. And then uh, that donut that is moving into uh, Cameron Parish right now, that is the eye wall. So this is making landfall uh, pretty much where we were thinking it was going to make landfall if you're cutting the uh, semicircle here uh, it's going to be between Cameron and uh, roughly the Grand Chenier area uh, and the worst of the weather is anywhere from uh, just uh, near uh, Pecan Island the Rockefeller area on all the way back through uh, we'll say Holly Beach Johnson's Bayou uh, uh, as you get into southwest Louisiana so these are the worst uh, part this is the worst part of the storm right now and again we have these tornado warnings going these are for 
for uh, storms that are producing uh, damaging winds. And uh, we can kind of take a look at the velocity right here real quick and uh, we'll see what's showing up. But we have uh, these cells that are in uh, uh, southwestern portions of Lafayette Parish showing up uh, and, uh, and northwestern uh, northeastern portion of uh, a Vermilion Parish. Uh, this is a pretty intense uh, looking cell. So this is where we have our tornado warnings going. And again, uh, you're in when you get in these rain bands, you hear the wind picking up the rain picking up. You get away from the windows. You get into an interior room, a closet or a bathroom. Uh, take your phone with you. We're broadcasting on KATC's uh, uh, phone app as well and uh, on Facebook and uh, everything. Uh, you, you can get all your information you need in a very compact area so you can get into a safer place and uh, by the way if we're expecting all these power outages, uh, one of the things you may want to do before the power outages occur is crank down that AC. Get it as cold as you can in your house because once the power goes off, it's going to get hot and you're eventually going to have to work your way over to a generator or have to just deal without the air conditioner. So that's going to be rough. So here we go. Here's the worst part of the storm. Now moving inland, Cameron and Creole and uh, gee, I forgot to check the uh, uh, gauges here, but I know uh, the water is coming up up here immensely on some of these uh, coastal gauges. So uh, that's where our, our storm surge is coming in. And your storm surge is actually uh, going to be displaced to the east. So the highest water coming in across eastern Cameron Parish and into uh, into uh, a Vermilion Parish here, southwestern Vermilion Parish. And we're talking a bulge of water uh, that is 15 to 20 feet above sea level. So an incredible uh, storm surge coming in. And it'll be interesting to see if this uh, works its way all the way up to uh, uh, past uh, the Highway 14 area in this particular area as we get into Vermilion Parish. But uh, very high water and very heavy duty rains uh, coming across uh, Acadia Parish where we have uh, the tornado warning going right now. Uh, you can see these cells, they have little curls to them and it's impossible to track these cells because they pop up and pop down and that's why uh, you know a lot of these hurricanes and post analysis they say oh it spawned 25 tornadoes well I guarantee you any hurricane spawns hundreds of tornadoes uh, we just can't detect them and keep up with them uh, that quickly and uh, they are, are there maybe one Doppler shot there and one Doppler shot there not and we get a Doppler shot every minute and you can have a tornado that forms and disappears inside of 60 seconds, uh, maybe a little bit longer than that, but they're very hard to detect and also very small on radar signature. They're smaller than uh, generally uh, the uh, what we can see on our uh, clarity in the radar, but we got heavy rains moving through Lafayette. This is not a good sign. I didn't want to see the big heavy rains coming through Lafayette until one or two in the morning, uh, but uh, this is going to cause localized street flooding and we have that flood warning going for a good part of the area as well. And then we move to the south and east and boy, these are heavy duty tropical rain bands moving through the Sippermore Point area. More than likely 70 mile an hour wind gusts here uh, with uh, these tropical rain bands that are moving on through. So uh, some pretty tough weather going on here. Uh, again, our hurricane uh, making landfall. Notice it's starting to interact with land. We had a nice little circle. Now it's starting to wobble as uh, again, the outer core of the, the core of this storm is beginning to interact with land and we'll see how it fleshes out. But very intense thunderstorm activity uh, going into Calcasieu Parish right now. That's why we saw those hurricane force winds. And then you've got that second band that's coming on through that's going to be producing the major hurricane force winds as we get into Cameron. So uh, done with tracking the storm. We know where it's going and uh, let's uh, put this in motion. And this is how it's going to go through four or five o'clock in the morning. A slow process. It's moving at 15 miles an hour, but it's got to clear 100 miles. So that's going to take a good eight hours uh, before it moves on out. So here we are a little bit after midnight and it's going to be another eight hours before the core of this storm and the highest winds move out. So the next eight hours are going to be a rough time for many of us to get to sleep. And even though Bradley and I will be getting off shift at two or three o'clock in the morning, uh, there's no sleeping if you're a meteorologist. Uh, we're going to be uh, watching the weather here uh, and keeping you updated on social media as well as Dave and Daniel come in to kind of take over. They'll be a little bit fresher than us, uh, but uh, uh, we're here for you uh, 24 and 7. Uh, this is one of the events where uh, the hurricane Andrew, I didn't sleep for 44 hours and um, we may come close to challenging that, but I'm a lot older now than Hurricane Andrew, so uh, we don't... We 
we don't, you know, we don't want to have to call on our medical plan uh, too early. Uh, but uh, that's what we're going to be up against. And again, let's get to those wind gusts once again in the rainfall because I think the, these wind gusts are spot on. Uh, we're maybe an hour behind. So uh, here we are. We'll say at midnight. Just change. Don't look at the time. Okay, I'll just call it out. Here we are at midnight, and I think we're probably seeing 100 mile an hour winds working their way north. We have Lake Charles, another tornado warning coming in. I'll let Bradley take a look at that and my phone goes off. Uh, that's a tornado warning for Lafayette when my phone goes off. So let me just go back this up and get back to the radar right here so we can show you. Uh, uh, but that's uh, what we were just looking at. Um, this uh, pretty intense cell that's moving through Lafayette right now and everybody's phone goes off on this one. So here's that tornado warning. Let's uh, pull up uh, the latest uh, information on this. Uh, this warning right through much of Lafayette Parish. Oh boy, it includes uh, uh, Vermilion. And you know, this is what the Weather Service has to do. Just throw up these huge tornado warning areas uh, where there's going to be the possibility of a uh, tornadic storms. And uh, we're seeing that with this squall going through here, but we don't see, let's see, we see something showing up on the velocity. Not a whole lot showing up on the velocity, but we have these strong rain bands moving on through and you're gonna have those swirls moving on through. So we do have a new tornado warning uh, that's in effect till uh, I could look at my watch, but I like playing on the board right here. Uh, let's just hit it right here, and that's going to give us a, a feel for uh, what we're looking at on this tornado warning. Hopefully, uh, sometimes it doesn't work, but uh, we'll uh, query, make sure we query that again, query that again and hit it right here. There could be a little latency on the computer because we're making it work over time, but uh, that warning until, uh, uh, let's see, 1245. Thanks, Jim. You know, I want to get you in here on the Weather Lab one of these days. Drive. We have to build a bigger chroma key wall for Jim, but we're going to make it happen. Uh, so uh, bottom line is, and I, I don't want to be flippant about uh, these storms uh, and uh, these uh, tornado warnings that we have going right now, uh, but there are going to be numerous tornadoes and we're not going to be able to cover it because you know why? You have a rain band that's coming in that's probably producing 90 mile an hour wind gusts and swirls and they're not maybe traditional tornadoes, but uh, the areas that are shaded in red right now, this is where we're seeing wind gusts 70 to 90 maybe in spots in the, with a few isolated tornadoes and man, it looks horrible as we get down toward the Lydia area, the Civil Point area. This is a very intense storm because when you see lightning, uh, that is a very bad sign. That means some of the strongest winds are working their way down into the bottom of the squall. And uh, that means uh, that the winds are certainly gusting quite high. And as we said, I'm calling it right now, landfall on August 26th at about 11.50 p.m. Uh, so that uh, makes uh, this storm, or we could call it the 27th and give it its own day. Laura could be the 27th, but we'll let the National Hurricane Center decide on how this is going to play out. So let's get back into the winds and these wind gusts. They're coming up. They're 55 to 60 across a good part of Acadiana as we go farther to the west. We're starting to hit the 70s and 80s right now in the next hour. Uh, then they're going even higher. We're hitting the 80s and 90s across Acadia, certainly into Jeff Davis Parish. Uh, I feel for you folks, you're going to have very, very rough conditions here. And again, as we get uh, into southwest Louisiana, Iowa, Lake Charles, uh, well over 100. These are gusts, not sustained winds, as we uh, remind you. But anywhere in the white here is a 100 mile an hour gust based on this model that I think is doing a very good job. And again, you can see the gusts in the 80s across western portions of Acadiana. Whenever you have these tropical rain bands go through, they're going to gust even higher than that. And again, uh, uh, interestingly enough, the model of keeping these strong winds and now remember the Hurricane Center was still keeping this a category two uh, just south and west of Natchitoches. So we could certainly see some of these wind gusts over 100 going well inland. Well, it's one of the things we learned about Hurricane Hugo, that one of the first storms, early storms uh, that I covered back in 1989, where 100 mile an hour winds uh, went to 200 miles inland. 100 mile an hour gusts went well inland. So uh, that is what we're certainly concerned about. And again, the rainfall very intense across the area. Uh, we're going to see uh, easily these rainfall levels achieved probably in the next few hours. So I think the, uh, the actual uh, uh, forecast of 5 to 10 inches up to 15 inches, certainly a possibility. And coming up, I'm going to go take a look over at uh, some of those tidal gauges to see if we still have any reporting and still have power and getting information from them. Uh, but that's it from now from uh, the KTC weather wall. We'll throw it back to you guys. Okay, and Rob, just real quick, I know we yeah. haven't heard from the National Weather Service yet, but you think the storm has made landfall? 
I think so. I, I think so. I haven't gotten the official word. Mm -hmm. uh, I check the printer. I'll check the National yeah. Hurricane Center. I don't know, Bradley. Have but you just seen all anything indications come, come by? at least? I, you know, it, I mean, if they want to go with the uh, center of the storm making landfall, uh, that's probably right about now. I okay. mean, we just go back to the Doppler radar. And, uh, you know, uh, for me, uh, you know, if the outer eye wall is making landfall, it's and landfall. we see that on the radar right here, uh, I think I think we have a landfalling hurricane right now. It's not going to intensify any further. Uh, so that is the good news. The bad news is a 150 mile an hour storm Ooh. making landfall. But soon as that uh, eye wall makes landfall, I, I'll call it maybe before other folks call it. But mm -hmm. uh, now we have a new flash flood warning. Uh, and that is uh, Bradley was that flash flood warning that just came in. Let's see. I, I can well look. I got it on paper right here. Let's not count on the uh, computer. All right, I think that extends right? into Iberia Parish here. Okay, yeah, I got uh, that. So the generate area. Yeah, weather service saying between one to three uh, fallen. That's not, it's probably been more than that. Additional rainfall of four to five inches is possible. So uh, this is what we're concerned with. We're gonna see these flooding rains. Uh, you know, if you're fl uh, prone to flooding, you're gonna see the water coming up in the streets, the water coming up into the yards. Fortunately, we've been relatively dry uh, before this storm, so maybe some of that rain will percolate down into the ground, mm -hmm. but uh, this is what we have to be on the lookout for, these training rain bands. These will easily produce 15 or 20 inches of rain if they don't move, and you don't want them to get comfortable. Uh, so we want everything to move northward. We want this to move northward as well and not persist in the same areas. And we never know how these are going to play out. So we have this one rain band. This is the most intense rain band we have going right now. The second rain band doesn't look as intense, but likely has stronger winds going through uh, Vermilion Parish and up into uh, Jeff Davis Parish. And then the, the big mama here, since it's Laura, we'll call it the big mama. This is where you're having uh, those 100 mile an hour winds uh, right around that eye wall and very intense and right here in the middle this is where the winds are 10 to 15 miles an hour and and you're going to have one round and this is going to be working its way northward toward Lake Charles uh, we said we're roughly about 1 a.m. it looks like it's going to be reaching southern Calcasieu Parish or roughly about 1 a.m. and then moving through the Lake Charles area about 1:30 or so that's when it's really going to get very intense then it's going to calm down at 2 33 o'clock in the morning and then you're going to get the back end of the storm after about maybe a 30 45 minute break again a 20 15 20 mile diameter eye uh, that means it's going and moving at 15 miles an hour that means we're going to be uh, you're going to be in that eye if you get in it for about an hour uh, before the winds come back up so you have a little bit of a lull you can kind of fix things if you can around your home so our, I, we know we have a lot of viewers in the Lake Charles area we have a lot of viewers anywhere but uh, when you do have the eye you do have the opportunity to get out and maybe shore up uh, some of the things that are uh, rattling around your home uh, but it's going to be a very very destructive storm and a storm of uh, destruction uh, that uh, while there, there, there's a, almost a morbid curiosity to see how this one is going to play out, uh, but it's going to be horrific. It's going to be horrific and catastrophic uh, for the Lake Charles area all the way down through Cameron and Holly Beach and all those communities that we've been talking about uh, for the last several days and over the last several hours. And as you mentioned earlier, Rob, that eye, you actually can look up at the stars as it passes by. Uh, more than likely, we are seeing that on the satellite imagery as well. Uh, when we are uh, taking a look at that satellite imagery, uh, we, you can see that uh, there is clear conditions uh, just above that eye, uh, you know, right moving toward Cameron at this point. So uh, you can see that, or this angle is a little off incident, but uh, you can see that's coming to Cameron shortly, as soon as they get through uh, that, uh, that eye wall that is uh, pushing on through right now. I'll back it up over here, and that's pushing on through. Look at that. You can see it right here. This is where uh, though Cameron has just had horrendous winds. Same with Grand Chenier. Winds are going to stay up toward Grand Chenier, but Cameron, the winds are going to come down to 10 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour for about an hour, and they'll need the break because they got more wind coming in about an hour's time when the wind turns around and comes mm -hmm. around out of the southwest and south.
All right, All Rob, right. we're going to check back in with you. I know you got some work to do. We'll let you do that real quick. Uh, we want to head down now back to uh, Vermilion Parish as the storm starts to interact with land. More of those bands coming on on shore. Let's check in with Matthew Torres. He joins us live in Abbeville with a look at the conditions right now. Matthew. Well, Jim, uh, Rob talked about those intense winds. We are now seeing those intense winds here just outside of the courthouse. We're actually on the second floor in the balcony where we have a better look as far as the rain coming down and all of the wind that's really affecting it. Now, it's been interesting. It, it kind of dies down, then it picks back up, dies down, picks back up. This has kind of been the, a little bit of a quieter compared to even seconds ago where it was just lashing across. You could see how strong the winds have been here. Uh, as we pan here, you could still see where there's been the power outage just down the street. The signs, the street signs over there, just really been swinging back and forth earlier, just trying to hold on. Uh, overall, it's been an interesting uh, experience being here at the Office of Emergency Preparedness, talking to officials here, one of them being an official with the ambulance system. He says so far there hasn't been any calls related to the hurricane, but there have been several medical calls uh, just outside of anything storm related. Despite the conditions that we are seeing here, of course, emergency responders and paramedics and the ambulance officials really still going out there to uh, make some calls, even just to give you an idea of really the uh, work that still needs to be done despite the hurricane uh, now making landfall. We have only seen a few people down the road. Those people are just law enforcement, just checking up on things. Uh, but again, from our vantage point, we really see where the direction of the rain, it's been going kind of uh, sideways. Uh, we see as well the strength of the winds once again. Uh, it just gives us, uh, it kind of uh, has toned down, believe it or not, uh, compared to a couple of minutes ago. But uh, no doubt, ever so often, we'll feel that gust, and so we'll just have to hold on to this balcony uh, ever so often. And so uh, we'll go back inside, hopefully get more information uh, from the officials here. Uh, as we continue to keep an eye out in uh, Abbeville. Back to you. All righty. Thank you, Matthew. Well, also, you know, speaking of conditions, he mentioned police officers out on the roadways. Uh, Katie Easter has been covering traffic issues and I-10 for us all day today. Let's check in with her now on things here in Lafayette. Katie. Oh, well, Laura's intense winds will be knocking down power lines. And in fact, LUS just reported with us that they have 24 outages, but 18 of those are coming back soon, they told me. And now, of course, if you do see a power line down, do not try to pick it up. Do not try to drive over it. That's the one main thing. So don't touch it. Don't drive over it. And now you'll see things loose or dangling and lines could still have electricity running through them. That's why it's important for you to call anytime you see any power lines down or even if your power goes out. And that phone number right now is at 337-291-9200. And again, that is it to report power outages and they can help you reporting power lines down as well. And now, of course, we are right outside of the Cajun Dome where teams are on standby to come out and help. But unfortunately, LUS says they cannot come out to pick up power lines or even to help you get your power back on until the winds are down to 39 miles per hour or under. Live in Lafayette, Katie Easter, KTC TV3. All right, LUS crews staging there over at the Cajun Dome ready to help out. For more on the power outages, we, we've been reporting several power outages, widespread power outages with uh, the utility companies across Acadiana. Let's check in with Andrew Clay. He's joining us live here in Lafayette with more information on that tonight. Andrew. Hey, guys. Wanted to do just a quick power outage update. A majority of the numbers we are seeing in the Acadiana area coming in Vermilion Parish and Acadia Parish and the latest numbers from Slemco about 37% out there in Vermilion Parish. When I clicked up on Acadia, it's about 29, 30%. Uh, Slemco is seeing the majority of the outages as they provide a big part of our viewing area and their outages right now, primarily in Vermilion Parish and Acadia Parish. Uh, the other power companies do have reported out outages, but the numbers are substantially less and the, and the weather here in Lafayette continues to be sustained. I know it's not doing much different than it was when I was up here 20 minutes ago, but I'm going to tell you, five minutes ago, three minutes ago, it just was not the same. The rain just sideways as the winds continue to blow. Again, as I said earlier, just because you're not in a coastal parish or you're not western closer to the eye of the storm does not mean by any means that you are out of the storm at all. You will continue to see rain and winds here throughout the night. Again, gusts here in Lafayette. 
uh, a little bit ago we were staying around 40. Uh, they may have picked up, but I'd be lying to you if I told you that the winds weren't any more. I, I just I can't judge winds like that. Rob can, I cannot. Uh, but as you can see, the rain, the wind, and the outages are starting to rack up. And, and in those Vermilion Parish outages, when I went in from that last live shot, they were at 24%. You know, that's less than an hour ago. They're up near 40% now. So just be alert and be conscious if you're running a generator and you know the generator safety tips we've talked about them a lot. It's all about don't run your generator indoors and just be smart and be safe. The rain here continuing to pick up in Lafayette. So we're going to turn this back over in the studio. But again, we are seeing outages all across our region start to creep up. And again, if you have a generator, you want to follow the safety precautions and just be safe and continue to be safe and ride out this storm if you're still here in Acadiana. For KTC, I'm Andrew Clay. Well, as we are learning about power outages throughout Acadiana, we're also getting a first look at people who have left some areas and are now moving into hotels here in Lafayette. We check in with our Iman Boyd with more. Iman. The availability of hotels in Lafayette is getting very limited. One woman tells me that she tried for almost an entire day to finally get a hotel room. It took all day Tuesday, literally. It wasn't till about one o'clock in the afternoon when I called this hotel property and the girl said, you got real lucky. We have one room left. I said, I'll take it. I didn't even ask. It was like, I'll take it because there was nothing. I mean, everything sold out quickly and I heard today that even hotels all the way up to Alexandria are booked. Gail Walker wasn't taking any chances with Hurricane Laura. She's lived in Church Point for about 20 years and had massive damage from Hurricane Lily back in 02. Even though her options were limited for evacuation, she was willing to leave. I wasn't going through it again. So I said I'm going to be smart and come here in Lafayette and stay and be protected. And if you are planning to evacuate the area, you should look at hotels and availabilities within the area that you are evacuating to. In Lafayette, Iman Boyd, KETC, TV3. Even people right there in Church Point, you know, it's going to be uh, an impact, uh, an impactful storm, especially in western parts of Acadiana. But uh, it's good to see that people have been following those warnings, Marcel. Yeah, we've been hearing out. from lots of uh, officials that people in their area, especially the lower lying areas, heeded the warnings and are getting out. We also heard them say for people who decided to stay, it would get to that point where they could not get to them until conditions improve tomorrow. But for mm -hmm. the most part, most officials we've talked to in high impact areas have said that people have heeded the warnings and that's that's good news. Lessons learned. We learned from Rita and other storms that not to take any chances, especially when you're looking at something that looks like Laura and hearing about the possibility for rapid intensification in a storm like this. So people listening and doing what's best to save themselves. We know property and businesses and so many things are so important, but nothing compares to the value of a life. Yeah, and, and, and our reporters who are out there, they're, they're in safe locations. We saw Matthew Torres there in Abbeville on the balcony, actually, of the courthouse in Vermilion Parish. And he, he was saying that he was seeing people out on the streets, but it was mostly first responders, mm -hmm. uh, police officers out there. But that was in Vermilion Parish where we had that very grim warning from Sheriff Mike Cuvion, who said, if you're going to stay, you need to just write your name next of kin. Uh, identifying information on a piece of paper, put it in a Ziploc bag and put it in your pocket because that's how they're going to be able to identify you. Yeah, Sheriff Cuvion, not a man to mince words, um, especially in conditions like this as well. So he's getting right to the point and saying if you're still below Highway 14 and in low lying areas that dealt with catastrophic waters and floodwaters after Hurricane Rita and you decided to stay for this one, that's his advice. Go ahead, put a plastic bag in your pocket so we can notify someone in the event that something does happen to you in the midst of Hurricane Laura. Mm -hmm. 1230, here we are. It is now Thursday morning, very early Thursday morning. Hurricane Laura making landfall uh, right now as we speak over there in Cameron Parish. Um, we are going to check in with Chief Meteorologist Rob Perillo for more on yeah. Laura. Uh, it's been about 15 minutes since our last update with Rob. Rob, what yeah. more can you tell us about the storm? Yeah, while we take the radar here, I'll just go through uh, some of the uh, wind gusts, the current wind gusts that we're getting. Acadiana Regional, New Iberia, 66 miles an hour. Lafayette, um, I'm hoping the anemometer hasn't broken, uh, but we haven't gotten uh, 
August since 1153. Let me just call up the five minute observations here. Uh, but uh, no, gusts are not showing up there. there. It looks like the anemometer at the Lafayette Airport may be malfunctioning. Abbeville, we're getting gusts to 31. Uh, 64. Uh, this is down over toward Lake Charles, uh, west of Lake Charles. Lake Charles coming in with a gust of 71 uh, shortly before midnight. Uh, so uh, pushing hurricane force winds. We got a report from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, Cameron. Okay, that was a gust to about 60 or 65 right here at KTC. Uh, we had a report in Cameron of a sustained wind of 84 with a gust to 110. Another area in the Cameron area, another station in the Cameron area, gust to 93. So uh, we are starting to see uh, what I was talking about earlier. We have the core of the storm. And then we have these very organized outer rain bands, and we have one intense one that's ripping through uh, portions of St. Mary Parish, Iberia Parish, uh, right as we speak, and up through Lafayette Parish. Very intense, a squall right here, and this is putting down very heavy rainfall. Uh, my neighbor said uh, he heard what sounded like a jet going over the house, and then it, as quickly as it went, it went by, and it wasn't a jet. There's no planes coming in, so that was likely a tornado or an elevated tornado or an elevated 90 or 100 mile an hour winds. And again, uh, as I told you, I don't like to see this uh, lightning. That means it's very intense rainfall. Rainfall rates on the order of four inches per hour. That's uh, the kind of rainfall we're talking about. So maybe the models are completely underestimating the rainfall, but the only thing we have going for us is this thing is moving along, but there's going to be a lot of water piling up and it's going to have no place to go. If we're talking about the storms in Lafayette, St. Landry, uh, down through Iberia Parish, the Tesh is going to back up uh, again, uh, be pushed northward with the south wind. Uh, the same for the Vermilion River and uh, again, we don't have any gauges here locally. The gauge over at Freshwater City is telling me just for about five feet. So I'm not sure if I believe that or not, or the, the storm surge is yet to come in uh, with this. So uh, we'll be watching that in the hours ahead. And again, uh, National Hurricane Center saying the eye wall moving into Cameron Parish. So we know uh, that uh, this is making landfall at this hour and it continues to slowly work its way uh, inland as we go right now. So uh, let's go ahead. I might not have loaded up the graphics and I know I didn't because I was looking at some other stuff on the web so just give me a moment here and we'll look at this big picture while I load up the graphics and Bradley's working the other computer here but uh, uh, oops there we go again and that's the way it happens with live television at times uh, so uh, we have a lot going on at this hour for sure with respect to these uh, very intense storms there pushing on through and uh, just uh, incredible as we track it with uh, four Doppler radars, right? Five Doppler radars, including uh, Slidell. And again, uh, we have these very intense rain bands coming in. Tornado warnings, and that's for very strong winds that are going to be pushing on through. And these are the bands that are going to be very intense. Uh, we have another intense band going through uh, Vermilion Parish. And then, of course, the core of the storm now working its way through Cameron Lake Charles. The winds are about to pick up big time uh, because here comes the eye wall. It's going to be moving into Calcasieu Parish shortly. Cameron, the winds are dying down. Creole, the winds are dying down as well. And and then we have uh, more storm action uh, that's going through Lafayette and Iberia Parish. Uh, Northern parishes as well starting to see these winds picking up. Allen and Evangeline Parish. And uh, you can see uh, that rain band extends all the way down to the south. And very intense rainfall. Iberia